Welcome to the Fantasy Audiobook. I evolve infinitely in the Marvel world. Chapter 101. Time passed little by little. It can be said that Dam and others hit it off with Renault and others. Dam, you guys have such good physical fitness, why didn't you join the Nova Corps instead of becoming a city guard? Renault asked casually as he walked towards the temple with two big fish on his shoulders. This Dam's superpower seems to be physical. Although it is not as good as him and Kyle, it is obviously many times more powerful than ordinary people. With such physical qualities on Xandar, it is not difficult to join the Nova Corps. It's embarrassing to say that we didn't dare to go to the front line and didn't dare to take the assessment, so we took up idle positions in the city guard team. But the guard teams work as idle, but they can't make any money. So I'm also thinking about whether I should take the test for the Nova Corps recently and make some big money. When Dam heard Renly ask about this, he casually found an easily convincing reason. After talking, he already knew that Renault and others came to see Lord Cassidyne, but they only saw Miss Sonia. It was obvious that Master Cassidyne decided to send blessings to them, so Dam didn't dare to meddle in their own business. If you are tied up by joining the Nova Corps, you might as well become a bounty hunter like us. As long as you do one big job, you can rest for a year and a half. We have luxury houses, fine wines, beautiful women, and we don't have to take orders. Wouldn't it be more comfortable? Kyle was carrying five or six stacked big fish on his shoulders and was walking very smoothly. He heard Dam's words and said loudly. They are still very proud of their status as bounty hunters. Bounty hunting is good, but joining the Nova Legion and getting the Nova armor will make me feel more secure. Dam felt a little envious when he heard the life Kyle mentioned, but he still chose to be down to earth and stable. Several people went to the temple while chatting. Although night has fallen, the temple is still very bright under the light. When Damu saw the statue of Lord Cassidyne, he clasped his hands and bowed. Dam's three brothers wanted to kneel down and worship directly because of the blessing given to them by Mr. Cassidyne. In just one month's work, their lives and ideals have been significantly improved. But when the three of them saw Dam's actions, they also bowed in the same way. Renly saw their uniform movements, his eyes flashed thoughtfully. According to when he and Dam first met, Dam directly called Cassidyne, sir, and his words were full of admiration. Although Dam deliberately concealed it during the conversation, when facing Cassidyne's statue now, he still couldn't hold back the respect in his heart. It's just that Dam didn't tell the truth, and Renly didn't deliberately expose it. Dam and others successfully joined the Void Cult and seemed to have gained some abilities through this. This made Renault even more determined to join the Void Cult. After all, judging from the appearance of Dam and the others, it was obvious that Cassidyne would not give orders to them. This means that joining the Void Cult will not have too many constraints. Only when necessary, Cassidyne may issue some tasks that require members of the Void Cult to complete. Renault went to call Lacey down first, and together they lit a fire under the temple and grilled the fish. Several people chatted around the fire and settled here temporarily. As the day went by, the news that Cassidyne personally released it spread to various places in the galaxy. Join Glorious Evolution. Isn't this Cassidyne trying to trick someone? In a starship, Star-Lord listened to music and read news on the internet, with a suspicious look on his face. Cassidyne is planning to establish his power. Some benefits will definitely be given to him, but it's hard to say how much he can give. But don't bring death to your doorstep. That's everyone, but that doesn't necessarily include predators like us who are hostile to bounty hunters. It's just that Cassidyne actually chose Xandar. This location should be a good place to watch in the near future. Yondu smiled when he heard Star-Lord's words. If the Nova Legion is smarter, they may be able to live longer, but if they are not smart enough, they will investigate the Void Cult established by Cassidyn. There were some conflicts, and Yondu had no doubt that the Nova Corps would be destroyed as a result. After all, if he was given a choice, he would rather be an enemy of the new army than provoke Cassidyn. This Cassidyn is like a god who appeared out of thin air, and this god seems to be plotting something. But no matter what the plot is, Yondu just wants to eat the melon. It would be better if he doesn't come forward. I am very satisfied and confident with my ability, there is no need to come forward. Although Star-Lord was somewhat interested in this, he also knew that he couldn't just send it to his door in a daze. 
It was too late for them to hide from Cassidy now, and they would only be sent to die if their brains were caught in the door. Just don't know how the Krees are going to react to this. After all, Xandar and Kree are the few great empires in the galaxy. Immediately, Star-Lord said thoughtfully, Whatever, dog bites dog, we just watch, maybe we can get some benefits by fishing in troubled waters. Yondu laughed at this. The more chaotic the universe, the better for bounty hunters and predators, because chaos breeds a lot of hatred, and hatred symbolizes profit. In a planet full of broken arm remains, it looks like it has suffered a devastating ordeal. A burly man with purple skin wearing a battle armor sat on a somewhat dilapidated throne. His deep eyes moved slightly as he watched the news that was rapidly spreading through the communication network in the universe. Cassidy is famous in the galaxy, and Thanos has naturally heard of his recent active performance. What Thanos cares more about than his strength is the language Cassidy is rumored to use and where he comes from C-53 Blue Star. This planet is extraordinary, because it belongs to one of the nine realms under the name of Odin, the famous god-king of the universe. Among them are two great gods, the famous supreme mage Giyuyi of the universe, guarding them. With these two great gods guarding them, not many people dared to act recklessly. But when the time comes, nothing will be an obstacle. Thanos dared to take his time because he knew that not many people in the universe knew the true identity of the Infinity Stones. As long as Cassidy didn't affect his plan, no matter what this god from the void did, he didn't want to worry about it. But if Cassidy dares to block his plan, then he will personally kill Cassidy, all for the sake of the continuation of the universe and the balance of resources. Asgard, God King Odin also received news that Cassidy, who has been very active in the galaxy recently, established the Void Cult. But he didn't take it seriously, even though Cassidy looked good at killing all kinds of disasters. But God King Odin has lived for thousands of years and has never seen anything in the world. Moreover, establishing a power is not that easy. Even if Cassidy wants to establish a huge power, it will take at least hundreds or thousands of years to achieve success. After all, just a group of incompetent people cannot be called a big force. The most important thing for a big power is that it needs to go through time and experience so that the race can be passed down from generation to generation. When the follow-up manpower is sufficient, clear systems, classifications, and powers are needed to ensure loyalty. Only after loyalty is ensured can a force be established. This Cassidy is willing to give everyone a chance, and Wong the Sage also wants to use Xandar as a springboard to quickly form his own power. But this is just a group of ragtag people put together, and it will only become a piece of loose sand in the end. In the planet Mowgli, a tall, handsome red-haired man exuding explosive power also received this message. The Void Cult established directly on Xandar by the great Mr. Cassidy. It seems that I also need to start applying to spread teachings. Alex's eyes were full of piety and admiration. Five months have passed since Mr. Cassidyne gave him his blessing. His appearance has completely returned to what it was like when he was young. Not only did his appearance change back to when he was young, but his strength was several times stronger than when he was at his strongest when he was young. Therefore, Alex extremely worships the great Lord Cassidy, the god of the void, who can bless him. King Orb Mowgli said he would observe him for a year before considering any large-scale propaganda. Alex himself felt that there was no need to worry, but now Lord Cassidy had personally established the Temple of the Void, and directly spread the news to the galaxy, intending to personally spread the teachings of the Void. As one of the believers of the Void cult, he naturally had to respond, otherwise he would not be able to see Lord Cassidy. And he doesn't want to see Lord Cassidy summon the followers of the Void cult scattered across the universe in the future. The people he brought over joined the Void too late, resulting in too low strength. The great god of the Void, Cassidy, your disciple Lix will never let you down. Alex knelt down before a statue in the temple and spoke extremely pious words. Immediately, Alex stood up and took out the communicator to contact the king, hoping that the king could start spreading the teachings of the Void. Let the entire people of Mowgli receive the gift of the Great Void, and let the entire race join in the glorious evolution. Most of the people in the universe who are connected to the stars and can use network communicators have heard about this news. However, although they admired Cassidy's strength, most of them couldn't believe that pie in the sky would fall. 
I just believe that if you want to join the void god religion, you must pay some price. Therefore, everyone plans to wait and see what happens. Anyway, the location of the power of Cassidon, the god of the void, has been determined. It must be said that this is a very bold act to directly advertise your power base to the public. It can also be seen that Cassidon, the god of the void, is absolutely very confident in his own strength. But despite admiration, I still let others take the lead. A few days passed. Renly, Kyle, Predictor, and Lacey, who were the first to take the lead and hoped to join the Void Cult, were kneeling before the statue in front of the temple, their hearts filled with gratitude, admiration, and fear. You have been blessed by the great Lord Cassidon, the God of the Void. Therefore, I am here to explain to you some of the abilities you will get after joining the Void Cult and receiving the blessing of the Void. Five meters away from where they were kneeling, Sonia looked at them and said softly, First of all, I want to congratulate everyone. From now on, as long as you don't die in danger, you will have at least hundreds or thousands of years of life. This means that you are freed from some constraints of lifespan and become a long-lived existence. Sonia's words were pleasant to the ears, but they were thunderous in the ears of Renly and others, and they stirred up turmoil in their hearts. They expected to gain power by joining the Void Cult, but they did not expect that they could directly change their lifespan. In the universe, as long as civilizations are highly technologically advanced, their lifespans will mostly be extended and they will live longer. But there are limits to this extension. For example, the longest-lived person on Xandar is over 300 years old, and most people can only live to about 200 years old. Belief in the void can actually extend one's lifespan. If the news of this benefit were spread, even the big shots on Xandar would probably go crazy about it. Now you may feel that your strength has not increased much, but it doesn't matter. As long as you receive the blessing of the void, it means that you have joined the glorious evolution. In the future, you can absorb various substances to allow yourself to evolve again and again and gain unparalleled power. I think after hearing this, everyone should have understood the meaning of the commandments. I hope you will not violate the precepts and become the subject of trial in the trial hall. The great Lord Cassidon is watching your actions all the time. Sonia's body shook slightly when she saw them, and she explained with a smile on her face while also giving a sincere warning. Sonia finally understood why Cassidon was willing to give the power of the void to countless people. However, she knew very well that Mr. Cassidon gave anyone a chance to join the void. There seemed to be no price, but the biggest price was to resist the desire from hunger. If you can experience the feeling of becoming stronger and still be able to control your behavior without losing your true intentions, then you can live longer and become stronger. Otherwise, let alone live for hundreds or thousands of years, you may have just joined, and once you become a monster with no sense and only knows how to eat, you will be judged. Thank you Miss Sonia, we will remember the commandments of the Void God Cult. Renly, Kyle, Predictor, and Lacey all nodded when they heard this and responded respectfully. The great Lord Cassidon said that he will not restrict any of your freedom. But the great and kind Lord Cassidon has prepared a gravity chamber. You have just joined the void. You can choose to stay on the island for a while to feel and practice how to master your own power and desires. As for food, you can pay the chef on the island to buy it, or you can go to the sea to salvage it yourself. I have applied for salvage application. If you want to eat it, you can do it yourself. You have become a member of the Void Cult. The great Mr. Cassidon looks forward to seeing you remain sane and clear-headed, now and in the future. Sonia continued to add some words after hearing this. After saying that, Sonia left. Although the first batch of visitors came quickly, the second batch did not come in the past few days. Sonia knew that people from the outside world must still be watching the situation of the Void God religion. After Renault and the others return safely, people will know that faith in the void will indeed gain strength. There will be more and more people hoping to gain strength through faith in the void, and she will be busy by then. But this kind of busyness is much easier than my previous job at a celebrity hotel. And after Sonia left, Renly, Kyle, Predictor, and Lacey all stood up from kneeling on one knee and looked at each other with eyes filled with wonder. I told you, this is our chance. Kyle said loudly with a happy smile on his face. Well, my strength has been at a bottleneck for a long time, and it may gradually become weaker as I grow older. I didn't expect that I would be able to improve again. 
Renault also had a smile on his face after hearing this. From the time I couldn't see Lord Cassidan in my future. I knew Lord Cassidan's strength was absolutely unfathomable. I never thought that my vision was still too low. No wonder I couldn't see such a great existence. The prophet said with emotion after hearing their words. Infinite evolution until you evolve the power to change your life. Lacey clenched her fists, feeling that everything was still so unreal. Not to mention his ability, Lord Cassidan's body alone is comparable to that of a galaxy. What he says will never be false. Congratulations, Lacey, you have also received a blessing. From now on, we will all belong to the Void Cult, and I need your guidance. Kyle looked at Lacey after hearing this, smiled and stretched out his hand to give his heartfelt blessing. Among the four of them, Lacey is an ordinary person, so she is the one who is most desperate for change and is also the most pious. The three of them knew that Dam and others had joined the Void, so they stayed here for a few days without any thought of leaving. Every day they were thinking of ways to prove their piety. Unexpectedly, four days had passed and they had received the blessing of the Void at the same time. We saw the great being together, and then Miss Sonia appeared. Thank you guys. When Lacey saw Kyle extending his hand, her eyes flickered and she also extended her hand. Congratulations on joining the Void Cult and becoming one of us. At this time, Dam and others rushed to the island after get off work. They heard the conversations of several people and showed their honest and honest smiles without hiding it. Dam, I know you. As the seniors who joined first, why don't you share some of your experiences with us? In exchange, I'll treat you to a meal. Renly said proudly when he saw Dam and the others coming again. This is what you said, don't go back on it. When Dam heard that Renault was going to treat him, he looked at the number of people present, then looked at Renelli, and said immediately, fearing that Renault would regret it. After several of them joined the void, their lives improved but not completely because all their money went into food. Damn, it seems you don't know the value of a second-level bounty hunter. It's just a meal. It's not like I can't afford it and I have nothing to regret. When Renelli heard Dam's words, he felt that he had been underestimated and said proudly with a wave of his hand. I understand. Who doesn't know the value of a second-level bounty hunter? When Dam saw Renault's appearance, it was of course impossible for him to tell the reason, but he immediately agreed. Several people walked towards the kitchen on the island talking and laughing. In the past few days, they have learned that many chefs have been hired here. But without permission, they didn't dare to go to the chef's place to have a look. They always caught fish for themselves. Now with Miss Sonia's permission, how could they not have a good meal? Along the way, Dam also explained the various evolutionary experiences and feelings after joining. Then it was only two hours. After seeing the appetites of Kyle, Predictor, Lacey and Dam, Renelli already felt a little bad. When Renault was paying, he saw that the bill cost him 180000 for one meal. Fortunately, he held the table in time to prevent him from falling off the chair. He also knows that the price of eating in restaurants on the island is not expensive, and it is basically the cost of ingredients plus a little production fee. To say it is affordable, it is definitely affordable enough. But he couldn't stand up to a few of them, and everyone who ate with open appetite was a guy who could stand up to dozens or even hundreds of people. No wonder Dam was afraid that he would regret it. Fortunately, after eating, Renault really felt that the large amount of food turned into energy, constantly nourishing his body. Among them, the most obvious change was Lacey. Just after eating this big meal, Lacey's appearance became younger. And because she can feel the strength of her body increasing, Lacey's eyes are full of confidence and expectations for the future. It is precisely because of this confidence that Lacey's appearance looks more beautiful and moving. Damn, you joined more than a month ago, so that means you were the first to join. After they had had enough wine and food, they chatted in the shade under a big tree. I joined before you, but I'm not the first. Miss Sonia should have joined before me. Damn heard Renelli's words and shook his head. I have to say that Miss Sonia is so beautiful. Kyle's face showed some admiration when he heard the mention of Sonia. Kyle, I know you like beauties, but don't say I didn't remind you, you have to split up too. The prophet heard Kyle's admiration and reminded him in a low voice. Who do you think I am? You still need to teach me who I can flirt with and who I can't. I just admired it and didn't have any thoughts. 
Miss Sonia should have been very good before she became Lord Cassidy's housekeeper. After all, temperament cannot be developed in a short time. After hearing this, Kyle replied angrily and then explained. As long as you know, don't worry about Miss Sonia when you worry about anyone, otherwise you may die suddenly. Seeing Kyle's, I understand, look, the prophet said. If we talk about identity, Miss Sonia used to work in a celebrity hotel. Dam said after hearing this. Miss Sonia used to work at a celebrity hotel. No wonder, those who can work in celebrity hotels are all beautiful women. Master Cassidy is so wise, he actually went directly to a celebrity hotel to select someone. Kyle said a little surprised when he heard Miss Sonia's past identity. As long as you stay in Xandar for a long time, you will more or less hear about celebrity hotels. Not to mention Kyle, a second-level bounty hunter who spends a lot of money, has also been to celebrity hotels. He would like to have a date with a woman from a celebrity hotel, but even if he is a second-level bounty hunter, he can only occasionally go to a celebrity hotel to experience it for 10 days and a half. It's not that I don't have money, but if I stay there for a long time, I feel like I can't help but spend money. 10,000 a day, if not a guy with a net worth of more than 1 billion and making a lot of money every day, generally he would not live in that kind of place for too long. Don't pursue the issue of Miss Sonia's identity too much. Let's adapt to the strength together. When other newcomers join in the future, we will be considered seniors. How can I brag to them when I don't know the point? Seeing how engaged they were in chatting and intending to continue talking more, the predictor took the initiative to change the topic, lest they talk too much and offend Lord Cassidy to death. After hearing the prophet's words, several people knew full well and stopped talking about Miss Sonia. One by one, they ran around the island to exercise and get used to their own strength. In the villa, Harvey looked at the void energy he possessed. The addition of Renly and Kyle each provided him with 10,000 void energy. Although it is far less than Tony, it is also the second most people that Harvey has introduced to the void so far. Sonia, I plan to leave for some time, for an unknown period of time. This is my contact signal. If you have anything, you can contact me directly. Thinking of Tony, Harvey thought about it, came outside the villa, looked at Sonia who was exercising hard and said. Sonia was exercising, and when she heard that the time was not precise but uncertain, her eyes flashed with a hint of complexity. Okay, Mr. Cassidy, if there are new visitors, I will report their situation to you. However, because she had expected it, Sonia hid this emotion very well. It only took a moment to turn around, and she had already adjusted it, and said with a smile. Although I couldn't follow him, it was a good thing to get Mr. Cassidy's cosmic communication signal. At least there won't be a situation where he disappears and he can't be contacted. Although the time is uncertain, I won't be away for too long yet, so you don't have to worry. How could Harvey not notice that Sonia's body was slightly stiff just now, and said. Well, I understand, Mr. Cassidy, please be careful along the way. Sonia heard that it would not take long and did not ask further questions. Instead, she smiled and sent a blessing. Her identity did not allow her to ask too many questions, and she also knew that Mr. Cassidyne did not want others to interfere with all his decisions. After getting to know the new visitors, if they can stay here for four days and still don't appear to be impatient or angry, you can contact me and let me know. Okay, I'm leaving. When I leave, you can eat all the food the chef prepared for me. Your strength is still too weak now, although visitors will be wary of what I dare not do to you. But I still hope you can take charge of your own business soon. Harvey heard this and spoke. Yes, Sonia heard that the strength was too weak and nodded again. Then, Harvey moved and went directly to the underground level to pick up the gravity device, and then came to Sonia. In front of Sonia, he took one step and disappeared. After discovering that Mr. Cassidy had left, Sonia's eyes flickered. She knew that she couldn't express her thoughts because she was too weak. But time is still long. As long as she maintains her current relationship and keeps her sanity growing stronger, one day she will definitely be able to get out of the situation that Mr. Cassidy calls too weak. Until that time comes, she still needs to suppress other thoughts about Cassidy in her heart. What she has to do now is to manage the island well and make herself stronger step by step. Harvey left Xandar in one step, 
then widened his vision and returned to the moon in one step, and returned directly to the blue star in another step. Although Xandar is at night, blue star is still at noon. After not coming back for several months, Harvey returned home. When he turned on his mobile phone, he found that Tony had left a lot of messages for him, as well as the news that 800 million US dollars had arrived in his account, which was obviously a dividend given to him by Tony. But money is a trivial matter. Harvey found that most of the messages contained Tony's discoveries and progress in research on cosmic communicators and cosmic translators. It can be seen from the message that Tony is full of excitement about these cosmic technologies. And as early as a month ago, Tony's message revealed information that had been successfully researched. Harvey calculated the time and found that in just over two months, Tony had conquered two alien technologies that were widely used in the universe. This talent was indeed unparalleled. This gave Harvey some ideas, but he had to wait until he talked to Tony to confirm. So after Harvey changed his clothes, he called Tony. It took less than five seconds for Tony to answer the call, and this time it was not a video communication, but a projection that appeared in front of Harvey. It's obvious that Harvey's mobile phone was directly modified by Tony. Harvey, are you back from the universe? Did you see the message I left you? Tony's projection appeared in Harvey's home, and when he saw Harvey, a proud smile appeared on his face. Of course, I didn't expect you to be able to conquer these two technologies so quickly. Sure enough, your mind is the real deal. Harvey said with a smile when he saw Tony's projection. Of course my mind is genuine, but that doesn't take away from Jarvis's credit. Tony received this compliment and accepted it as he should, but his words were still somewhat modest. Come to my house and talk about it in detail. I have researched it, but I haven't promoted these two technologies yet. It's just for personal use. I want to wait until you come back to see if I want to promote it globally. Immediately, Tony didn't waste any time and directly invited Harvey to visit his home. Good, Harvey didn't refuse after hearing the words. He took him overlooking New York and arrived at Tony's manor in an instant. Dear Mr. Harvey, I haven't seen you for a long time, but you are still as handsome as ever. Jarvis faced Harvey's arrival and took the initiative to say hello. It seems that you have changed a lot, Harvey said in surprise when he heard Jarvis's flattery. This is all thanks to Mr. Harvey, the alien material you brought back. Let Mr. Tony Stark make further improvements to me. Jarvis heard the words and spoke, but his words revealed some more human-like joy. The special materials that Mr. Harvey originally brought back allowed Mr. Tony's steel armor to be updated and iterated. The cosmic communicator brought back also made its intelligence significantly improved. Now its signal range is farther, and its computing power and intelligence are also more powerful. Harvey was thoughtful when he heard this. To be honest, it is not a good thing for Jarvis to have too high intelligence. Intelligent AI controlled by the inventor is good artificial intelligence. If it goes beyond the scope of control, it will cause some problems at any time. But whether he should stop Tony or not, he would not know until after talking to Tony, so he didn't say anything first. When Harvey came to the lobby, he could only chat with Jarvis for a few seconds when a figure quickly ran up from the underground research room. The speed was obviously much faster than before, and the control of power was also very good. There was no uncontrollable situation, and he accurately stopped two meters in front of Harvey. How about we take a look at my research together? Tony said with a smile after seeing Harvey can. After Harvey saw Tony's control over his own power, he heard this and nodded without refusing. The cosmic communicator you brought back last time is really a good thing. It has raised Jarvis's information transmission speed to a new level. Now it doesn't matter where I am on Blue Star. You can ask Jarvis to send the steel armor to me directly remotely. It's a pity that I forgot to ask you for your cosmic communication number last time. Otherwise I could have contacted you long ago. When Tony and Harvey walked down to the underground research room together, Tony seemed to start a conversation and took the initiative to talk. I can exchange it with you if you need it. When Harvey heard Tony's words, he clicked on the wrist of his right hand, and a projection popped up. Okay, but is your place in the universe far from Blue Star? If it's too far away, the signal might not be very good. Although I have researched it, it is still insufficient due to the limitations of materials. So let's just use the one you gave me. After hearing this, 
Tony picked up the cosmic communicator that Harvey had given him previously on the table and said. He is very confident in his own mind, but the cosmic communicator is the crystallization of alien technology after all. The gap between Blue Star's technology and that of aliens is still very obvious. It is already very good to be able to reproduce a few versions in just a few months. It is impossible to completely catch up or even improve in a short time. It will be all right. Harvey didn't mind after hearing this, and connected to Tony's cosmic communicator with a few clicks, leaving signals to each other. By the way, Harvey, I have something I need to ask your opinion on. The cosmic communicator I researched and produced, although the cosmic device is so advanced, once it is popularized, it will be countless wealth. It will also drive the development of Blue Star's various technologies. Do you think I should promote it? Tony's eyes flashed when he saw that the name on the communication signal was not Harvey but Cassidy, but he didn't ask any more questions and instead talked about another matter. Cosmic translator you can promote. But the cosmic communicator, unless Blue Star has already planned to connect with the universe, it is best not to promote it for the time being. After Harvey finished exchanging signals, he sat down somewhere and said. Blue Star is not protected by the god King Odin and the Supreme Mage. Aren't there people from the alien world who dare not mess around? When Tony heard Harvey's words, he had some questions in his mind. Tony, I know you want to drive the technological development of the entire Blue Star so that humans can have more power to protect themselves. But you have to know that once Blue Star starts to use cosmic communicators extensively, it means releasing a signal to aliens. Blue Star is ready to meet with various civilizations on various planets, and they will also increase the probability of visiting Blue Star. Once this signal is released, it will be irreversible. Although Blue Star is protected by Odin and Ancient One and is not afraid of the arrival of alien races, they do not have many years to live. Can you guarantee that Blue Star's technology can develop rapidly in just a few decades and enter the interstellar era to catch up with the starting point of other aliens? Harvey saw Tony's appearance and understood Tony's thoughts, so he said slowly. Although I would like to assure you that it is possible, due to the various material materials that Blue Star has, it is unlikely to be possible within 10 years. Tony had a wry smile on his face when he heard these words. Blue Star's technological development can be said to be very fast. From the steam age to the current modern society, it only took more than a hundred years. Human science and technology has developed rapidly over the past hundred years, which can be said to be the result of countless replacements of geniuses and countless human efforts. More than a hundred years can allow past human beings to update and iterate for several eras, but for a civilization, more than a hundred years may only be the beginning. Tony learned from the books that Harvey brought back that the civilizations of many alien planets would not formally integrate with other planets until they entered the interstellar era. The most that Blue Star can do at present is to launch rockets and satellites to survey several planets around Blue Star, which is still a long way from the interstellar era. This is why he researched and reproduced a low-end version of the Cosmic Communicator, but did not rush to publish it immediately, but planned to talk to Harvey before talking about it. To be honest in his heart, Tony was a bit lucky, because it was impossible for Blue Star's technology to catch up in a short time. However, there are two big figures in Blue Star who can buy enough development time for mankind. However, although Harvey did not clearly say how many years the Supreme Mage Ancient One and God King Odin have left. But Tony estimated that it was only within these decades. In a few decades, it is hard to say whether humans can bring back some rare materials from the universe that are not available on Blue Star. Even if Harvey helps bring it back, research and production will still take a lot of time, so catching up with the starting point of alien technology cannot be achieved in a short time. Tony, you don't have to be too anxious. Although I understand that you want to connect with the universe and crazily absorb knowledge from various civilizations, so that you can invent more things to benefit mankind. But you don't need to be too anxious, as long as you don't encounter any accidents or die in battle. You have a long life and can study it step by step. Harvey saw the wry smile on Tony's face and spoke to comfort him. I have a lot of time, but Blue Star and humans may not have that much time. Hearing this, Tony crossed his chest with one hand and touched his chin with the other, with a tangled look on his face. Ever since Harvey brought him the alien technology, 
apart from eating and exercising for three hours a day and spending time with Pepper after 12 o'clock at night, Tony basically spent the rest of his time in the research room. It was a good thing that he joined the void, otherwise his body would have collapsed long ago after only resting for two to four hours a day for several months. Harvey saw Tony like this and knew that people like Tony who were cursed by knowledge would find it difficult to feel at ease the more they knew. People cursed by knowledge will feel anxious because of insufficient firepower and anxious because of hidden dangers to safety. If you want to completely eradicate this anxiety, you can only truly feel at ease by solving Tony's concerns. Otherwise, no matter what words he said, it would be difficult for Tony to relax, slowly do the things he was interested in, and then spend every day lazily and comfortably. But this is not a bad thing for Harvey, because he knows that the more Tony behaves like this, the easier it will be for his plan to be implemented. But before talking about that plan, Harvey felt that he still had to wait for the right time. Time will bring everything you want, let's not talk about it for now. How's your steel armor doing? So Harvey watched Tony take the initiative to change the direction of the topic. I studied the things you brought me last time for more than two months. The materials brought back are more suitable for improving intelligence than improving the power or hardness of the steel armor. So in just over a month, the performance of the steel armor has only been slightly improved, and the greater improvement is mainly reflected in the intelligence aspect. Tony saw that Harvey had taken the initiative to change the topic, so he temporarily put aside his worries and spoke. If Jarvis's intelligence is improved, the steel armor is equivalent to improved intelligence and can execute all instructions issued by him faster. You should have some restrictions on intelligent AI, right? Harvey heard Tony's words and glanced at Tony. Tony is a mad scientist and the man who created Ultron. At this stage, the Avengers have not yet been completely formed, and he may not always be on Blue Star. If Tony creates an existence similar to Ultron in advance, causing an omnic crisis, even if it is successfully prevented in the end, it will cause a large number of casualties. Therefore, Harvey felt that it was still necessary to remind Tony. How can I still be unclear about what I made? Jarvis Deep Program has many limitations to ensure that it will absolutely obey my orders. Tony said with great relief after hearing this. As long as you are confident, I don't need to tell you that you should have seen a lot of science fiction movies. If an omnic crisis breaks out, even if we prevent fatalities and injuries, it will still be inevitable. Harvey looked at Tony's relieved look and just reminded him without saying anything further. I see. When Tony heard Harvey mention the omnic crisis, his eyes flickered and he nodded. Harvey saw that Tony seemed to have really thought about it and said nothing more. He only cared about reminding him a little, and he was not that worried. Because the fundamental reason why Tony created Ultron is that the original Tony, limited by his fragile human body, has been participating in frontline dangers and is seriously lacking in combat power. That's why Tony wants to create an army of steel and let artificial intelligence directly follow orders and fight on the front line. But now Tony believes in the void. As long as he continues to evolve, Tony's body will be more powerful than the steel armor. It is just a matter of time. When someone else dismantles Tony's steel armor, he may have to face real fear. This makes Harvey look forward to the time when Tony and Captain America meet. I wonder how Captain America will react when he discovers that Tony is very powerful under the iron shell. Harvey noticed his thoughts, calculated the time, and found that Captain America should wake up in about a year. If Captain America wakes up, Harvey doesn't need to win him over. After Captain America has seen everything in modern times and the void, he will come to him if he is thirsty for power. If Captain America didn't look for him, Harvey wouldn't take the initiative to look for him. Because after Captain America saw the power of the void, he did not waver. If he longed to believe in the void to gain more powerful power, then even if he tried to persuade him, it would be useless. Captain America is different from Tony. When he first attracted Tony, Tony was just an ordinary person who had just changed his mentality and created a cross-era technological crystallization like the steel armor, but had never seen the big world. If there is any difference between Tony and ordinary people, it is that Tony has a better head and is rich. But good brains and money are not the key factors. The key thing is that Tony was just a genius inventor and rich man who had not seen the big world. And Tony had concerns in his heart. 
After knowing that he was willing to give Pepper the opportunity to believe in the void, Tony simply agreed. Captain America, on the other hand, is a guy from the old era, whose thinking cannot keep up with modern times, and he does not have Tony's ideal of having a longer time to develop his talents. What's more important is that Captain America is in modern times. The woman he loves is dead and he has no friends or partners he knows. The only friend and partner is Bucky, the Winter Soldier, and there will be more entanglements later. Captain America has experienced the loss of family and friends, plus not having too many worries and ideals that take time to realize. Immortality may be a pain for Captain America. So Harvey will not take the initiative to win over Captain America. However, Captain America is eager to join the Void, and he will give the other party a chance. Tony saw that Harvey didn't continue to talk about this topic, and he was keeping in mind to prevent himself from crossing that line, but he didn't have enough ability to stop it. By the way, Harvey, can you tell me what you have been doing in the universe these past few months? At the same time, Tony also asked the question that he had been curious about. It's nothing but building the Void religion and letting more people believe in the Void. Harvey originally wanted to mention this to Tony, but he didn't expect Tony to take the initiative to ask. Naturally, he had nothing to hide, so he said casually. Establish the Void religion, so that means I have a companion. When Tony heard Harvey's words, his heart was shocked, his brain turned rapidly, and then he asked excitedly. You should call them by members. Whether they are your companions or not, I can't say yet. You also know that if you believe in the void, I won't restrain them with too many rules. When Harvey saw Tony's excitement, he knew that Tony wanted to unite other members of the void cult to help Blue Star at the critical moment, so he poured cold water on it. I just knew you had no limits, so I was tempted. This means that as long as I become an ally with them, I can ask them to help, right? You can't stop the friends I made from helping Blue Star, right? Tony didn't mind smiling when he heard Harvey's demoralizing words. He knew that if he wanted the Void God cult to help Blue Star, the best way was to ask Harvey directly. It's just that Harvey has a very bad impression of S.H.I.E.L.D., and the same goes for American politicians. According to Tony's understanding of Harvey, Harvey would at best not take the initiative to destroy Blue Star when no one provoked him. But it's not that easy to count on Harvey to protect Blue Star. And Tony clearly remembers that Harvey said that during the crisis in 2017, humans would unite with many aliens to fight against the enemy. In other words, the scope of the disaster will not be small, and there will be more opportunities for alliances. If you can convince them, of course I won't stop you. But don't say I didn't remind you that Blue Star is not their home. If you bring them here, you can't completely guarantee that you can check and balance their words. It's not necessarily a good thing for Blue Star. Harvey's eyes flashed when he heard this. He originally wanted to induce Tony to go to the universe, but he didn't expect that Tony actually took the initiative to bring it up. There was an indifferent expression on his face and he said casually. Of course I know, but as long as they are not people without desires, then as long as you give enough benefits, you can impress them, right? Tony said with a smile when he heard that Harvey didn't intend to stop him and sat down on a chair next to Harvey with peace of mind. Although he joined the Void and gained the ability to evolve, he became stronger and stronger. However, he has never forgotten that while he is a genius scientist, he is also one of the most famous rich men in Blue Star. Making money is also one of his abilities. Although you are rich, Blue Star's money is not universal in the universe. Harvey said meaningfully upon hearing this. Of course I know that, looking at all the powerful civilizations in the universe, the human civilization of Blue Star is only a low-level civilization. It is natural to follow the currency system of advanced civilizations. So Harvey, I have a request. Tony already knew this, because he had this plan himself, but he just needed Harvey's permission. Tony wouldn't have thought this way before, because his vision was limited to Blue Star. But after joining the Void, gaining a long lifespan, and studying alien technology. Naturally, his vision also expanded to the universe. If it is indeed only on Blue Star, it is limited by the environment, materials and various research facilities. It is difficult for him to allow Blue Star's technology to develop rapidly, change the entire environment, and allow Blue Star to quickly enter the interstellar era and officially connect with the universe. However, 
Tony has never been a stickler for rules. Since Blue Star's environment and materials are temporarily insufficient to support his continuous research on new inventions, then he would just leave Blue Star and go to the universe to seek development. Tony is confident that as long as he is exposed to alien technology, he will be able to find ways to invent new things to make money, quickly accumulate wealth and develop. Because he has a steel suit, a cosmic translator and a cosmic communicator, Tony is not worried about being in the universe and it will be difficult to take action. As long as the language problem is solved, Tony can just use his talents to the fullest. But Tony knew very well that if he wanted to implement his plan, he needed Harvey's help. Because at present, he has no other way to directly enter the universe except asking Harvey. If you can't set foot in the universe, then development will be impossible. Pepper agrees to this. Harvey was a little surprised when he heard Tony's words, but he also knew what Tony's request was. It's still a pleasure chatting with you as always. Pepper, I haven't explained it to her yet, but we all believe in the void and have a long lifespan. And I didn't leave for a long time, it was just a short separation. It's not difficult to convince Pepper. Tony found that Harvey had already understood the request before he even said it, and said with a smile. If you're not here at Blue Star, aren't you worried about Blue Star's situation? Harvey heard Tony's words and said again. What are you worried about? God King Odin and Supreme Mage Ancient One are not dead yet. If the sky falls, there will still be someone taller to hold it up for now. It is precisely because of this opportunity that it is suitable for me to take a walk in the universe. Tony had already thought about the question Harvey asked. Okay, but if you want to go to the universe, you have to make arrangements for Blue Star first. When the time comes that you want to come back, I hope you rely on your own strength. I won't be your special driver. Harvey heard this and spoke. If you want the Void Cult to develop rapidly, you need not only members, but also money. Although being a bounty hunter is quite profitable, it can even be said to be a no-cost business for Harvey, but for making money, it is definitely faster to directly engage in arms and inventions. So when Harvey discovered that Tony was researching and inventing so quickly, he originally wanted to persuade Tony to follow him into the universe. It's fine now. Even before he persuaded him, Tony himself had the idea of going to the universe with him. But it's not surprising that Tony has this idea. After all, Tony is not only a genius inventor, but also sometimes turns into a crazy inventor, and sometimes has a morbid pursuit of technology. I won't bother you when I go, because I have no other way to get to the universe except to ask you. But when I get to the universe, I'll trouble you again when I come back. I don't want to say whether you are willing to agree or not. I can't even afford to lose face. Tony heard this and patted his face with his right hand and said with a smile. Yes, the Void Divine Religion has just been established, and it is a time when it is short of money. If you want to make money and research various things, I can provide you with various funds in the early stages of development. When the time comes, I won't take advantage of you in terms of the money you make from your invention. 46 points, how about 4 for me and 6 for you? Harvey saw that Tony had considered all the situations and was not surprised, so he started to negotiate terms. You don't need to divide it 40 to 60 or 50 to 50 to make it work. After all, if you don't take me to the universe, I won't be able to come into contact with more alien technologies that I want to come into contact with in a short time. When I needed to buy something expensive in the early days, I had to misappropriate the funds you gave me. When Tony heard Harvey's conditions, he was not stingy but said it very simply. He knew he had nothing to hide in front of Harvey. He has always wanted something from Harvey, and Harvey has not sought any benefits from him. Now that Harvey said that the Void Cult was short of money when it was first established, Tony naturally wanted to take the opportunity to help Harvey. Otherwise, he will always get some benefits from Harvey, but he can't do anything to repay the favor. In the future, he might be too embarrassed to ask Harvey for help because of his face. Tony is confident that as long as he gets into the universe, he will be able to make a lot of money in a short time. If he didn't say he had enough money to buy a space battleship, it would definitely be possible to buy a space fighter and come back. If it didn't work out, he could just borrow some money from Harvey to buy it first. As long as you have a space fighter plane, you can travel between the universe and Blue Star. 
he is confident that from now on, in less than eight years from 2017, Blue Star's civilization will develop rapidly. Tony gained a long life of at least a thousand years after joining the Void, and then learned about various civilizations in the universe. His vision is no longer limited to the different levels of the United States and other countries, but looks at the entire human civilization. He will rely on his invention to bring about cross-era changes to Blue Star's technology. Let Blue Star enter the interstellar era and enter the advanced civilization of the universe as quickly as possible. But if he wants to realize his ideal, he must let Blue Star survive the unknown and powerful crisis that Harvey told him in 2017. Therefore, he must seize the time and do everything he can currently do. Okay, I just need to rest in Blue Star for a while. I brought you some gravity devices. You can take advantage of this time to study them and chat with Pepper. After getting her consent, I will take you to the universe. I don't want you and your wife to have any estrangement because of this matter. Harvey heard this and spoke. Good. Tony was a little moved when he heard that Harvey had brought him the gravity device, but after hearing the words that followed, he nodded seriously. It was because of his persuasion that Pepper joined the void with him without any doubt. In the entire Blue Star, except for Harvey, he and Pepper are the only ones who have joined the Void. The two are dependent on each other, so Tony has never thought of treating Pepper badly. Moreover, Pepper became more and more beautiful after joining the Void. His smooth skin and extremely soft body toughness allowed him to open up new worlds again and again. Therefore, before going to the universe, he must discuss it with Pepper. But Tony is not worried. He will definitely be able to make the round trip within a year at most. As the saying goes, a break is better than a new marriage. Maybe the relationship will be better by then. I'll get it for you, and then you can figure out a way to convince Pepper. Harvey saw that Tony seemed to have a plan for this, so he didn't say anything more. Teleported directly back home, the next second Harvey came to Tony with various gravity devices that Sonia bought for him. I'm going to stay at Blue Star for a while and relax. Call me when you've taken care of things and are ready to go. After Harvey put the things on the ground, he waved and left. After Harvey left, Jarvis quickly scanned these weird devices of different shapes and said. Sir has been scanned. It is best not to activate these things in the laboratory, otherwise after the unknown gravity device is activated, the drastic changes in gravity will destroy the laboratory. Extend the progress of your research. Jarvis also gave advice immediately. Well, how to change gravity should be one of the starting points for space battleships. Tony nodded when he heard this, squatted down and opened the several large boxes. Looking at the contents inside, his eyes became a little hot. You must know that it is because mankind's current technology cannot solve the problem of gravity, which leads to extremely strict selection conditions for human astronauts. If he could study it thoroughly, it would not only mean countless wealth, but to be honest, Tony was simply short of money at the moment. More importantly, if the gravity device can be thoroughly studied and manufactured independently, it will allow humans to relax the selection conditions for astronauts, which will help humans understand the universe faster. Moreover, this thing is also the key to making a space fighter. He has learned about it in books, but he is limited to materials and knowledge, and there is no way to start. Now that he has a ready-made gravity device, as long as he studies and understands it, he can learn from it and make a smaller version. It would be nice to be able to directly use materials to make inferior inventions, improve step-by-step -step through research, and then make your own inventions. Inventing such things often comes from a sudden inspiration, and they quickly develop various inventions that ordinary people don't understand. But more inventions require rich knowledge and the accumulation of various experiences, and then assisting in research with various instruments to ensure the birth of inventions. If there are existing inventions that can be studied, it means standing on the shoulders of giants. If compared to the various civilizations in the universe that have grown into giants, human beings are currently just children who have not yet grown up. Various technologies from aliens can quickly help Blue Star's technology grow. After Harvey handed the things to Tony, he returned home and took a comfortable bath. Sonia, arrange afternoon tea for me. After Harvey took a bath, a golden battle armor appeared on his body and he gave an instruction casually. After saying this and finding no response, Harvey looked at the familiar scene in front of him and remembered that he was now back at Blue Star and Sonia was not with him. 
Sonia had been serving his daily meals for nearly half a year, so he got used to it without even realizing it. However, Harvey realized that he was behind Blue Star. He took off his golden armor, walked into the cloakroom, picked out some clean and casual clothes, and drove out to find something to eat. Harvey drove all the way and went to Chinatown and ordered some food he liked. The S.H.I.E.L.D. people also discovered the news of Harvey's return, so they asked the agents to stay away from the area where Harvey was active. Although they did not know where Harvey had gone after he suddenly disappeared for several months, they knew very well that they could not leave the vicinity unless necessary, otherwise they would try to stay away from the devil Harvey. Even if other people have superpowers, Nick Fury has a way to deal with them. However, facing Harvey, a demon with extremely terrifying strength and no restraints from laws and morals, he might be lost if he provokes S.H.I.E.L.D. The last time they were able to leave with luck was because Coulson left a good impression during his contact with Harvey, and Tony Stark helped to talk things over. Therefore, Nick Fury does not want to stand against Harvey unless he has to. And before Harvey wreaks havoc on Blue Star, Nick Fury can't help but ask Captain Marvel for help. After Harvey finished his afternoon dessert, he drove around. When he was on Xandar, he had to consider various things and how to quickly further improve his strength. Even when he returned to Blue Star, he was still thinking about whether he could drag Tony into the universe. But now that the plan has been completed, naturally Harvey decided to relax completely. Harvey drove around New York and was approached by many beauties. For the first time in a long time, he chose a beauty of the same appearance, body and age to spend the evening with. The beauties of Xandar Star are similar in appearance and body shape to those of Blue Star, so they each have their own merits. It would not be difficult for him to find a partner. But because he was there, Harvey had to maintain Cassidy's identity. Therefore, he is not limited to the indulgence of physical desires. At most, he can find something to do to pass the time. Now that he has returned to Blue Star and regained his identity as a wealthy young man in New York, there is no need to cover up. When Harvey woke up at noon the next day, he felt happy again and directly gave $2 million to cut off contact with this beauty. Money is a small thing to Harvey. Now Stark Industries alone pays himself dividends of 200 to 300 million every month. It can be said that even if Harvey spends 5 million a day, he can't even spend his entire day's income. If he had a relationship with a woman, it would be troublesome if he didn't break it off completely. He didn't want these little things to affect his mood. Then Harvey spent more than 20 days in a row, every day besides eating, he would find beautiful women to accompany him. After there is no need to think about making money, the life of the rich is so simple and unpretentious. During this period, Sonia also called and many visitors came. However, without enough information and unable to see Harvey, there were not many people who could persist for four or five days and still firmly believe that the void would not leave the island, only eight people. Some of them said that this was a scam by Cassidy to trick them into spending money on the island. For this reason, Sonia also asked Harvey for his opinion on how to deal with it. Harvey naturally doesn't care about these rumors, although he seeks void energy, so he relaxes the conditions and is willing to give everyone a chance. But as long as he gets one or two more hero templates, Harvey will have the confidence to deal with many powerful enemies. Therefore, for those who want to obtain the power of the void and change their lives, Harvey does not have many requirements. At least they cannot be eager for quick success and need to have enough patience. If such a person does not have the patience to wait for a few days, after gaining strength, he will definitely risk doing things that violate the precepts of the void god religion because of his desire for more powerful power. The execution is a minor matter, but it will mainly cause a lot of trouble for the residents, and may even trigger other members of the Void cult to violate the precepts. Harvey is not powerful enough to specify rules for the universe now, but when selecting personnel, it is still possible to look at people's character. 24 days passed unknowingly. This morning, while Harvey was having breakfast, he received a call from Tony, the first sentence he answered. Solved. Well, I worked hard and finally made an agreement with Pepper that I would definitely come back within a year, and Pepper agreed. So are you ready to go now? Let me finish my breakfast before leaving. After all, I have to leave for a year, and there may not be this kind of breakfast available by then. No, you can do it yourself. Just kidding, you think I can cook. 
My cooking skills are probably about the same as those of most ordinary people. I'm having breakfast too, so I'll see you later. I have some things to explain to you. About your identity in the universe. Well, let's talk later. Harvey was not surprised when he saw that Tony was proud that he could not cook. After all, Tony was born with a silver spoon in his mouth. Not being able to cook was indeed something one could be proud of, as Tony never had to do it himself. Then, in less than 10 minutes, Harvey finished breakfast, turned off all the power in the house, and went directly to Tony's manor. Pepper knew that Tony was leaving today, so she didn't rush to work, but waited. Good morning Mr. Harvey, I heard something. The universe is not a blue star, so Tony asks you to take more care of it. After seeing Harvey, Pepper bowed slightly and said hello politely, and asked Harvey sincerely. Good morning, Miss Pepper. I haven't seen you for a few months. As for care, I can't speak of it. Although the universe is dangerous, Tony's intelligence, talent and strength are enough to survive in the universe. It's just that Tony can't directly step into the universe, so his range of activities is limited to Blue Star. After Harvey saw Pepper, he also said hello with a smile and said, I also believe in Tony's talent and strength, but the universe is an unknown place for Tony and I. I hope Mr. Harvey can take care of Tony, thank you very much. Pepper heard a smile on his face, but there was still some worry in his eyes. Tony explained more to her, so she understood why Tony wanted to go to the universe now. If possible, Pepper would also like to go there, but the Stark Company in Blue Star needs her to take care of, and she can't leave yet. Whether it was her or Tony, there was no one with enough ability to completely trust them. So she can only do it, but after this time she also plans to train a confidant, so as not to be unable to go to the universe with Tony in the future. Pepper, don't worry so much. I've given you the cosmic communicator. I'll contact you as soon as I get there. If you miss me, you can contact me directly. Tony saw Pepper keep begging Harvey. He felt helpless and felt warm in his heart, so he spoke. The reason why Pepper was willing to allow him to go to the universe was that they could talk to each other remotely and not have any news for a year. Harvey didn't care when he saw the two of them being so close. He sat on the sofa and waited for the two of them to greet each other. Tony chatted with Pepper for a while, and then came to Harvey's side. Harvey, I made you laugh. Tony said a little embarrassed. Isn't that what you said? How lonely it would be to live forever without anyone by your side. So it's a good thing that you have a good relationship. Harvey said without paying attention when he heard this. Well, luckily I have Pepper with me, so I won't be unable to take off my armor. Tony heard Harvey's words and looked back at Pepper with some tenderness in his eyes. By the way, if you have anything to tell me, just say it directly. Then, the tenderness in Tony's eyes dissipated, and he looked at Harvey and asked curiously. It's not complicated to say it's an explanation. You should also know that you added my cosmic signal. My alias in the universe is Cassidan. That's the identity I used to establish the Void Divine Religion. They all call me Lord Cassidan, the God of the Void. As a member of the Void Cult, when you communicate with other members, you must address me as Lord Cassidan. It's your ability to make friends and win over the members of the Void Cult. But don't expect to use my identity and name to show off your power. If this is the case on the surface, it doesn't matter if you just call me Cassidy in private, but you can't mention my name in Blue Star. Harvey heard this and spoke. Cassidy, God of the Void, really fits your name. I remember, I will never cause you any trouble. After hearing this, Tony showed some pity on his face and said, because he originally planned to use Harvey's name to make it easier to get close to other members. After all, Harvey, as the founder of the Void Cult, is also the leader who makes others believe in the Void. If he has connections with famous people around Harvey, he will definitely be able to attract the respect of other members. But Harvey obviously saw through his mind and blocked his path directly. Tony didn't regret it for too long. After all, it was a good thing that Harvey didn't mind him wooing other members of the Void Cult. Just remember it, I'm going to take you to a planet called Xandar. The Void Cult's first stronghold was also on a private island on that planet. Harvey felt relieved after hearing this and explained the situation casually. It's the planet with the famous Nova Corps. You really know how to choose a place. 
Tony also learned about some civilizations in the universe from the books that Harvey brought back before. Well, although the Kree's planet is equally advanced, the laws and rules are more troublesome. So I chose Xandar, which is equally advanced. Do you have anything to bring? Harvey nodded upon hearing this. There's nothing else to bring. Apart from the gravity device you gave me, there's also Jarvis. Without Jarvis, my research and invention speed would be greatly reduced. Tony was also a little excited when he knew that he could go to Xandar, a famous empire in the universe, and said. No wonder I didn't hear Jarvis's voice. Did you take him down first? Harvey heard Tony say that he was going to take Jarvis over, and then he noticed that he had been here for a while, but he didn't hear Jarvis greet him as usual. It's not dismantled, it's just copied and made with an extra backup AI, called Jarvis 2. Tony heard this and spoke. As soon as Tony finished speaking, a voice rang out, Mr. Tony, how can I help you? It's okay, you don't have to worry about it, you can just follow Pepper's instructions. Okay, Mr. Tony. After receiving Tony's instructions, Jarvis number two's voice quickly fell silent. No wonder it took you so long to process it. Did you spend time making a backup AI? Harvey said thoughtfully upon hearing this. Well, just wait for me and we can set off. War armor reload. Tony nodded slightly when he heard this, then stood up, came to a place in the hall where there were no obstacles around, stretched out his hands and shouted directly. The armor that used to fly up automatically when called casually now failed to respond for several seconds and the air briefly solidified. Originally, Tony planned to act cool in front of Harvey, but now he failed to act cool and instead made Harvey look at him weirdly. This made Tony want to dig a hole and crawl down. When Pepper saw this scene, she turned her head away in embarrassment, not looking at Tony. Originally, Tony planned to act cool in front of Harvey, after all, it was a technological achievement that he was proud of. Not to mention the strength, at least the appearance and the feeling when wearing it are very handsome. Isn't there a saying that has been rumored for a long time? All men understand the romance between armor and mecha. Harvey is also a man, so he must understand it too but now he didn't pretend to be handsome. Instead, he made Harvey look at him weirdly, which made Tony want to dig a hole and crawl into it. When Harvey saw Tony's failure in pretending, he suppressed the smile in his heart and just looked at Tony. Jarvis too, armor reload. Tony could only hold back the shame in his heart and spoke loudly again. As you command, Mr. Tony. As Tony directly called Jarvis number two, the intelligent AI responded. The sound of propeller jets sounded, and pieces of armor quickly flew out of the underground research room and quickly attached themselves to Tony's body. In just a few seconds, Tony transformed into a handsome Iron Man wearing a gold and red armor. After all, it's a newly replaced smart AI, so it's not that smart. After Tony put on the armor, he turned around and saw Harvey's smiling eyes, and directly found a step for himself. Although there was a little accident, I have to say that you looked very handsome when you shouted just now. But this is how the transformation works. When Harvey heard this excuse, he suppressed a smile and said. After the words fell, Harvey stood up. The purple and gold armor reappeared on his body, a golden mask appeared directly on his face, and he was covered with a white battle robe. His eyes also changed from black pupils to golden pupils full of majesty. Quote dot 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 quote. Tony was speechless and choked up when he saw Harvey's instant transformation, feeling as if he was pretending to be the wrong person. How did you become like this? Can you teach me? Tony asked with some emotion when he saw this handsome appearance. When you truly master the power of the void, I will teach you. Harvey heard this and spoke. All right. Tony heard the power of the void and remembered the purple energy released by Harvey before and understood. After he has evolved more than 50 times, his evolution speed has dropped a lot. He has only evolved 81 times after joining Void for more than half a year. His physical strength has become very powerful, but the power of the Void that can be released is only a dozen centimeters in size, which is obviously not enough to reach the stage. Let's go to the underground research room, take your things and leave. Knowing that he wouldn't be able to learn for the time being, Tony didn't hesitate. Anyway, there would be more time in the future. Instead of this, he was already thinking about how to make a handsome appearance when meeting other members. 
Harvey didn't know that Tony wanted to show off so much, so he just came to the underground research room, stretched out his hand and released the power of the void to directly surround the gravity device and Tony. Then a black hole in the void appeared under Harvey's feet, and the two of them disappeared. The next second the two of them appeared on the moon. Quote dot 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 quote. Tony stood inside the purple energy shield, looking at the blue planet in the distance and the white earth under his feet, his eyes filled with wonder. As a scientist who specializes in arms technology, who doesn't have the dream of setting foot in the universe. Now when he actually does it, all Tony has in his heart is excitement and longing for the universe. Immediately, a black hole in the void about a kilometer in size appeared under Tony's feet again, and the two of them disappeared again in an instant. How far have we crossed? Tony felt the scenery in front of him and around him suddenly change. He looked at the black-red planet in the distance that he had never seen before, and asked with some horror. It spans more than tens of thousands of light years and is ready to arrive. Harvey said casually after hearing this. Tony heard that it was tens of thousands of light years away in just one moment, but before he could react, the scenery in front of him changed again, and he came directly to a house. Then, the purple energy shield surrounding Tony disappeared, and several gravity devices contained in large boxes fell to the ground smoothly. Quote dot dot dot, is it here now? Tony found that he could breathe immediately. He looked out the window and found that he was in a villa in the forest. He said without realizing it. Well, we're here. Harvey nodded slightly when he heard this. Crossing tens of thousands of light years in less than 10 seconds. Tony heard this and said loudly and unbelievably. This is a type of void magic. Spanning tens of thousands of light years is nothing. Harvey said calmly after hearing this. Isn't this nothing? Tony said in shock when he heard Harvey's indifferent tone. He knew that Harvey was very strong. After all, Harvey said that provoking Ancient One and Odin was just a little troublesome. Harvey must be one of the big names in the universe. But even though he knew Harvey's identity and strength were very strong, Every time he saw Harvey take action, Tony realized that his original knowledge was still too low. For civilizations in the current universe, although they cannot travel across tens of thousands of light years in 10 seconds, they can still travel across tens of thousands of light years in a few days. So don't be too surprised. When you see various technologies, you will be surprised. Harvey saw Tony's shocked look and said, Remember what I told you before coming here. Immediately, Harvey noticed something and whispered. Tony heard the whispered reminder as he pondered why Harvey would say that. A blonde figure quickly ran in from the stairs. Mr. Cassidan, welcome back. After Sonia saw Harvey, a smile appeared on her face. Well, go and prepare something to drink for me. Harvey nodded slightly when he heard this and said. Yes, it will be delivered to you soon. Sonia saw that in addition to Mr. Cassidan, there was another person wearing a battle armor. Although she was a little concerned, she immediately nodded after hearing the instructions, and then Sonia quickly left. Quote dot dot dot, Mr. Cassidy, is this your lover? After Tony saw this beautiful woman with a youthful and lovely appearance, a proud figure and an excellent temperament leaving, the gossip in his heart was instantly ignited. No, she is my housekeeper Sonia. About the construction of your laboratory and the requirements for various materials, you can tell Sonia then. Harvey glanced at Tony after hearing this and said casually. I don't believe it. If they are just housekeepers, why don't you find a few of them in Blue Star? Tony asked in disbelief when he heard this. Harvey is also famous as a young rich man in Blue Star, and he is still young and unmarried. Even if he got married, Harvey probably wouldn't be able to be restrained by just one wife. It can be said that if Harvey wanted to, it would not be a problem to hire 10 or 8 personal female secretaries, let alone a housekeeper. Whatever you think, Harvey saw that Tony didn't believe it and didn't bother to say so much. What a familiar excuse, but with your status and strength, what are you afraid of? No one can control what you do, right? Seeing Harvey's unwillingness to explain, Tony said with some nostalgia at first. The purpose was to induce Harvey to continue the conversation with him. I didn't bring you here just to gossip. Harvey said speechlessly when he saw that Tony looked like someone who had come over. Chapter 111 Forget it, if you don't tell me, I'll know just by looking at it. Where will I live for the next while? Tony saw that Harvey obviously didn't want to talk about that woman, so he stopped pestering her and changed the topic. 
There are four villas on the island. Apart from this one, you can choose one to live in temporarily. Instead of where to live, you should quickly think about what kind of laboratory you want to build. The speed of building laboratories on Xandar is still very fast. Seeing that Tony didn't dwell on this issue, Harvey felt relieved for some reason. He sat down at a big table and spoke. You can pick whatever you want, then give me three days. After I finish Jarvis myself and understand Xandar, I will basically know exactly what I want to do to make money. Tony also sat down directly next to Harvey. When faced with these work matters, he didn't waste any time and directly gave a time. He knew that Harvey was willing to bring him here, not just to let him get to know other members of the Void Cult. Instead, he is expected to research new technologies to make a lot of money. In this way, not only can he research alien technologies, Harvey can also have more wealth to operate. Of course, this kind of thing is a win-win situation. For Tony, it is even a matter of killing two birds with one stone, and he naturally won't mind. After all, many scientists on Blue Star have no choice but to study alien technology. At this time, Sonia had already brought the drinks over. Your drink Mr. Cassidyne, sir, this is yours. Sonia said respectfully when she saw that this man in armor seemed to be on equal footing with Mr. Cassidyne. You don't have to be so polite. My name is Tony Stark. You can just call me Tony. Tony knew that Sonia had a close relationship with Harvey, and Sonia was obviously also a member of the Void Cult, so he clicked on his helmet and revealed his face, with an extremely friendly attitude. He came to the universe for three purposes. The first was to make money so that he could directly purchase a large amount of things and send them back to Blue Star. The second is to research technology, which is one of his hobbies, and it can make his steel armor stronger. The third is to make friends with members of the Void Cult. It is best to form a deep friendship, and then you can win over the other party to help you fight. Hello, Mr. Tony, my name is Sonia and I am Mr. Cassidyne's housekeeper. When Sonia heard these words and saw that the translator showed that the language used by C-53 was the same as Mr. Cassidyne's, her eyes flickered and she said with a smile. Hearing that it was really the butler, Tony looked at Harvey in confusion. Sonia, Tony has a very smart mind and has made achievements in science and technology. He wants to build a laboratory of his own on the island. Then you can help him contact people to build it quickly. Harvey turned a blind eye to Tony's eyes and looked at Sonia to instruct. Okay, Mr. Cassidy. Sonia was a little surprised to hear that Mr. Cassidy had been away for nearly a month and had brought back an inventor with a good mind, but she didn't ask any more questions and just nodded in agreement. Ha, ha. Cassidyne, let alone the laboratory, can you give me a new cosmic communicator first? I need to contact Pepper to reassure her. When Tony saw that Harvey and Sonia were really businesslike, he suppressed his gossip first and almost blurted out the name Harvey, but he reacted in time and changed it directly. Sonia, go get him a cosmic communicator. Harvey saw that Tony didn't call him by his blue star name, but changed his name, so he didn't care and said. Good. Sonia was a little surprised when she heard Mr. Tony address Mr. Cassidyne, but she still nodded. Then he quickly went downstairs, entered the basement and took out a brand new cosmic communicator. Cosmic communicators, unless some specific private brands, the cosmic communicators produced by Xandar and Cree are not expensive. Because of its extremely wide adaptability, the main focus is small profits but quick turnover. Tony took the cosmic communicator, stood up and walked to the bedside, operated it himself, and quickly dialed a communication. Even though they are far apart, the communication range of the cosmic communicator is very wide. Just over a minute later, Tony connected with Pepper. After Tony told Pepper that he was safe, Pepper quickly felt at ease. Then there were instructions from Pepper telling Tony not to cause trouble to Mr. Cassidyne. When Harvey warned Tony, Pepper was also present. Knowing that Tony was in the universe now, she would not expose the secret even if it was a communication. Tony didn't think he would cause any trouble to Harvey, but he was here to help, okay. However, facing Pepper's serious and somewhat worried tone, Tony could only nod in agreement. The two talked for several minutes, and Tony hung up the phone on his own initiative to stop Pepper's thoughts. This cosmic communicator is really easy to use. It took just over a minute to connect us despite being so far apart. After hanging up the communication, 
Tony didn't show any embarrassment on his face, but instead said with admiration. It was just Tony who drank the drink Sonia had prepared for him on the table in one gulp as he spoke. I'll go out and take a look. I'll let you know when I've chosen a location. Tony made an excuse and used the propeller jet of the steel armor to fly out of the window. After Tony left, Mr. Cassidyne has really found an interesting person. Sonia said with a smile. He is not only interesting, but his talent in science and technology is something that few people can compare with. His arrival will allow the void divine religion to no longer be troubled by money. Harvey heard this and spoke. How long does Mr. Cassidy plan to stay here this time? When Sonia heard Mr. Cassidy's unabashed praise, she also became a little curious about Tony Stark, but she had more concerns than curiosity. I won't leave for the time being. I'm here to observe the members who want to join. After hearing this, Harvey thought about it and said, Okay. When Sonia heard that she would not leave for the time being, her eyes showed unconcealable joy. Tony's talent is genuine, but the more talented a person is, the more likely he is that he will have some problems in his daily life. Sonia, go prepare a list of secretaries for Tony and let Tony choose from them to see if there is anyone he is satisfied with. Harvey saw Sonia looking a little happy, so he didn't care and gave instructions. What's the standard for appearance? The person who spoke to Mr. Tony just now was his wife or something, right? Sonia asked after hearing her brain turning rapidly as she was looking for a secretary. Money is not an issue, the main thing is that the appearance is not too beautiful and pleasing to the eye. Harvey heard Sonia's reminder, thought for a moment, and explained the standards. If Tony didn't officially confirm his relationship with Pepper, Harvey wouldn't care who Tony chooses to be his secretary. But now that Tony and Pepper have officially confirmed their relationship, if Tony chooses someone too beautiful, he can live a life of shamelessness while lying drunk on the beauty's lap. So when we go back, Tony and Pepper are probably going to fight. Okay, I'll take it over and show it to Mr. Tony later. Sonia heard these standards and wrote them down. On the other side, after Tony flew out of Harvey's villa, he flew directly into the sky, overlooking the overall structure of the entire island. He found that the island was developed but not fully developed. It only had some infrastructure, a harbor, a place to live, a temple, and a black tower that he had never seen before. No wonder Harvey said that the Void Cult is short of money now. The island also has many places to build various things. There are relatively few people on the island, only about a dozen or so, but their physical fitness is far superior to that of ordinary people, and they can run very fast. It seems that they are adapting to the strength, and some are swimming in the harbor and catching fish. The faces of these people are very similar to the humans on Blue Star. If Tony hadn't had a shocking trip to the stars before coming here, he would have doubted that he would be on Blue Star now. There are fewer women among these members. Except for Sonia, who he just met, Tony only met two others in total. She also looks very beautiful. In addition, she is exercising at this time, showing off her proud and body curves, which adds to her charm. This woman is a woman who is obsessed with countless people in Blue Star. At this time, Tony's radar sensed that a red dot was moving at high speed, and the moving direction was exactly where he was. This speed was at least above the speed of sound. If he hadn't been wearing steel armor, he might not have been able to catch the other party's traces. In just over 10 seconds, a figure appeared a hundred meters away from his side. This also allowed Tony to see clearly the appearance of this man, he was a silver-haired man. The silver-haired man climbed directly up the big tree, and then jumped dozens of meters high. This height obviously couldn't reach Tony's height. But when Renly fell from dozens of meters, Kyle was already there. He squatted down and put his hands together, showing an amazing sense of strength in all his muscles. When he caught Renly, some pit marks appeared on the ground, so he lifted it hard. Renault took advantage of his strength and soared into the sky like a rocket, accurately flying towards Tony's height of 200 meters. These things happened in just a few seconds, and Tony saw that the other party seemed to be about to attack him. Although now he does not have the assistance of Jarvis and cannot exert the full strength of the steel armor, Tony is not afraid at all. In Blue Star, because he wanted to hide his identity as a member of the Void, he had no chance to take action and could only do daily exercises on his own. 
Now the other party seems to have misunderstood him, and he doesn't want to explain but just wants to experience the feeling of fighting. Therefore, the jets under Tony's feet were activated directly, and with a boom, he swooped down from above and rushed towards Renly. Tony punched him directly, but the confident punch was avoided by the opponent's weird sideways movement in the air. This made Tony secretly scream in his heart. At the same time, Renly had directly grabbed Tony's armored arm. Then Renly quickly climbed onto Tony's back, locked the armor's hands with his hands, and stepped on his back. With a sound of, bang, a terrifying force came through, causing Tony to fall to the ground quickly like a falling airplane. Facing this move, Tony knew that even if he could use his feet to activate the thrusters and continue flying, his hands would be locked. If he couldn't break away from the other party, he wouldn't be able to continue fighting at all, and he would watch himself fall rapidly. Just when he was about to fall to the ground, Tony felt a hand grab him directly, and then he found a steady and down-to-earth feeling under his feet. When Tony opened his eyes, he found a big man over two meters tall and full of explosive muscles looking at him. The silver-haired man who grabbed him from 200 meters in the air was also looking at him. Who are you? How dare you hover over Void Island? Renly looked at the figure in armor in front of him and asked with a somewhat unkind tone. Before joining the Void cult and believing in the Void, Renly often cooperated with Kyle and the Predictor to complete some third-level bounty missions that even second-level bounty hunters could not complete. The strength and combat experience of the three of them are not comparable to those of ordinary second-level bounty hunters, so catching unidentified flying objects can be said to be easy. But it was also because they didn't know the identity of this Iron Man, so they didn't dare to kill him directly to avoid causing any trouble. Otherwise, the predictor would have shot down the Iron Man with one shot. Don't be nervous, don't be nervous, you should also be members of the Void Cult. Me too, Tony felt that the two men were looking at him eagerly. He originally wanted to fight to vent, but now he found that he seemed to have overestimated his own fighting experience and underestimated the opponent's strength. Without the assistance of Jarvis, the information he can collect and quickly use in battle is greatly reduced. In this situation that was extremely unfavorable to him, there seemed to be no chance of winning in a 1 vs 2 fight, so Tony naturally took the initiative to reveal his identity. We are indeed a member of the Void Cult, serving the great Lord Cassidy. But since you are also a member of the Void Cult, how dare you fly high in the sky? Renly heard Tony's words and looked at Tony's appearance in the armor with some doubts. I really am. When you join the Void, you should have seen monsters that are unimaginably huge, right? Seeing that they didn't believe it, Tony's brain turned quickly and he said something that was easiest for people to believe. Renly, he's seen it too, so he should be too, right? Kyle heard the scene Tony was talking about and looked at Renly to seek Renali's opinion. Although Renault felt that the Iron Man's actions just now were disrespectful to the Void cult, the scene he mentioned was indeed a great scene that only those who had been blessed by the Void could glimpse. Those are not monsters, they are gods of the Void. So it was okay if he didn't believe it, so his expression softened a little and he corrected the other party's words seriously. Yes, that is the ultimate of Void. It's easy to say that we are both members of the Void cult. My name is Tony Stark, you can also call me Iron Man. I just wanted to see the layout of the island. I didn't mean to offend. Tony saw that these two people seemed to admire Harvey very much, and knew that trying to defend would only lead to a quarrel, so he directly agreed, clicked on his helmet, smiled, and said in a friendly manner. Although they only fought a few moves just now, the strength of these two people is really strong, and they will get stronger in the future. If they can get acquainted and win over each other, they will definitely be a great force to help Blue Star in the future. My name is Renly, and I am a superpower. You can also call me Supersonic. Renly knew that this was a misunderstanding. Faced with the friendly appearance of the other party, he did not deliberately embarrass Tony and spoke. My name is Kyle, and I am also a superpower. My code name is Dashin. Kyle also introduced himself, the predictor. At this time, a voice came quietly from behind Tony. Quote dot 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 quote. Tony turned around when he heard the voice and saw a man whose face was clearly covered with bandages and a black robe, sitting on a tree 50 meters behind. Look at the large firearm that the prophet is holding in his hands, which looks untouchable. The good guy was on Blue Star. 
He had not met many superpowers in all his years of life, but he met three superpowers when he first arrived in the universe. Renally, Kyle, Predictor. I remember. How long have you been joining the Void Cult? But this did not make Tony feel scared, but instead he felt a little happy, because these were equivalent to his kind. He doesn't need to be afraid that because he shows too much power, he will attract these people's strange eyes and moral abduction. Including today, we have just joined for 23 days. Renali saw that Tony was a stranger, but he joined the Void Cult. They have probably guessed that this Tony should be a senior who joined the Void God religion much earlier than them. You guys just joined less than a month ago. It would have been almost nine months since I joined. But my physical fitness is still not as good as yours. People with superpowers are really good. Tony said with some emotion after hearing Renali's words. He had predicted before that if Harvey would not only give ordinary people the opportunity to join the Void, there would definitely be guys who had just joined and were extremely powerful. He doesn't know the strength of that prophet yet, so it's hard to say yet. However, the strength shown by Renly and Kyle is definitely capable of blocking a thousand monsters with one. It turns out to be a senior, but your combat experience seems to be somewhat lacking. And although your armor can fly, it will only fly if your armor is hard enough. Otherwise, it's not a good thing to keep flying on the battlefield. It might kill you suddenly. Renali heard that Tony had actually joined for almost a year, and his words were somewhat respectful, but also contained some admonitions. He, Kyle and the Predictor have fought against too many people, and it can be seen from the first fight that Tony's combat experience is extremely lacking. Well, I haven't fought many people in the past. When Tony heard these words, he simply admitted it. Although he had fought against terrorists on Blue Star, the gap in strength between him and the terrorists was too big. It's a unilateral beating, and it can't be called a combat experience at all. Senior Tony, you have been here for so long, do you have any experience in evolution that you can teach us? Seeing that Tony was not angry, Renly completely relaxed his guard and said casually. What is your experience in evolution? There are two directions of evolution. One is to eat and the other is to adapt to harsh environments. But it was too hard to adapt to the harsh environment, so I evolved by eating a lot of food. However, after research, I think the direction of evolution is based on the direction in which I most hope to evolve and become stronger. If you feel that your physical strength is not enough, the next evolution will most likely increase your physical strength. Other aspects of strength will be enhanced, but the increase will not be obvious. The speed of evolution will be very obvious at the beginning, but the more times you evolve, the slower the speed of evolution will be. But there's no need to worry, we all have a long lifespan. After hearing this, Tony did not begrudge his experience. It would be better to say that he had always wanted to find some compatriots to exchange his thoughts on evolution. I see. I asked why my speed is getting faster and faster, but my strength has not increased much. You can evolve even if you adapt to a harsh environment, so what kind of environment does it take to be considered harsh? Is any evolutionary direction okay? Compared to Tony, Renly, Kyle, and Predictor are newbies who have just joined the Void Cult and are learning evolution. Now there is a senior who naturally wants to learn more knowledge. Tony saw how they all wanted to know each other, and felt the joy of teaching. The few people chatted for several hours, and after learning that Tony had just arrived in the universe and had no money, they also treated him directly. Tony originally wanted to entertain them at his own expense as a senior, but this was not Blue Star. But even though he had no money now, Tony made a direct promise and promised to treat them to a big meal in a month. One month is enough time for him to adapt to the universe. He may not be able to make any money by then, but isn't it natural that he should eat and drink at public expense? In just a few hours, Tony didn't use Harvey's name to get close to them. However, he still met the members of the Void Cult on the island and got to know each other. This kind of conversation without having to hide one's identity made Tony feel a little bit happy. After eating, Tony said goodbye to them and left. Although he was still flying, he didn't fly as high this time. He found a villa and lived in it. Less than half an hour after Tony moved in, Sonia arrived. Mr. Tony, Mr. Cassidyne said that he needs to arrange a secretary for you to take care of your daily life and handle some trivial matters. I made a list, please take a look. Sonia casts a projection. 
The projection introduced their ages and what work experience each had. I recognize your ability. Dot, but I have a question. Isn't there something more beautiful? Like your appearance. No matter how bad it is, I can still be like Lacey. Tony sat on a sofa and carefully looked at the list of secretaries and found that all of them basically had sufficient work experience. Most of them can work long after they are in their teens, so there is basically no need to question their ability. It's just that the appearance of the women on this list can only be said to be over the top. As for the ones that made him feel from the bottom of his heart that she was beautiful at a glance, there was no one. Thank you for the compliment, Mr. Tony. But Mr. Cassidyne said that for the sake of peace between you and your wife, the secretary arranged for you cannot be too beautiful. Please understand Mr. Tony. Sonia's smile didn't change when she heard Tony compliment her appearance. Quote dot 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 question mark quote. Tony heard these words and wanted to say something but couldn't refute. Mr. Cassidy expected this reaction from you. So I told you that if Mr. Tony wants a more beautiful secretary, I can arrange it for you. Only if you can convince your wife. Sonia saw Mr. Tony looking a little speechless and said with a smile. When it comes to selecting secretaries with extremely beautiful looks, there is definitely no shortage of them. On the contrary, it is necessary to specifically screen out these women who are only slightly beautiful, which is even more troublesome. Can't I do it secretly? As long as my wife doesn't know, won't it be fine? When Tony heard Sonia's words, he knew he couldn't convince Pepper, but he had some thoughts in his heart, so he whispered. Please Mr. Tony, please don't embarrass me. This matter was decided by Mr. Cassidy. If I violate the rules and fail to handle it properly, I may attract criticism from Mr. Cassidy. Sonia said politely with a troubled expression on her face. Okay, that's it. Seeing Sonia like this, Tony couldn't guarantee that he could persuade Harvey to let Sonia go when he blamed Sonia, so he could only accept his fate. After careful selection, Tony finally chose a female secretary who was the most pleasing to the eye and also had an excellent figure. Okay, she will arrive tomorrow afternoon at most. You are responsible for your daily life and some trivial matters. If you want to go further, it depends on whether you can convince this female secretary, Mr. Tony. Dinner will be delivered to you later, Mr. Tony, I hope you get used to staying here. If you have anything you want to purchase, please contact me. I will arrange it for you as quickly as possible. Sonia saw the list that appeared after Tony ticked the boxes, smiled slightly, said politely, and left. Tony probably also realized Harvey's intention, which was that he didn't want to have a conflict with Pepper. After knowing this intention, Tony knew that he would not be able to pick up girls for a while. But this was good, it cut off his thoughts of picking up girls, and he could focus on understanding the universe and developing new technologies. So Tony also started to look for things in the villa. He had to install Jarvis first. Fortunately, the more advanced civilian technology is, the easier it is to get started. So it didn't take long for Tony to get it done. Sir, where is this? Jarvis directly connected the equipment in the villa, and the sound rang out. This is Xandar, and we will spend the next year here. Hurry up and connect to the internet to take a look at the database. Investigate the history of Xandar and collect all information related to the space fighter for me. Then design a laboratory for me. Tony responded casually and asked Jarvis to get it. As you command, sir. Jarvis heard these instructions and carried them out directly. The convenience of Jarvis is that it can save Tony a lot of time looking up information, allowing him to work efficiently. Tony was not idle here either, and directly started surfing the internet using the cosmic communicator. Take a look at the news on Xandar and some things in the universe. Sonia returned to Harvey's villa. Mr. Cassidyne, arrangements have been made for Mr. Tony. Sonia came a few meters away from Harvey and spoke. He's not dissatisfied. Harvey was a little surprised to see Sonia come back so soon. Mr. Tony thought that if he did it secretly, it would be fine, but I followed your instructions and asked him to give up his idea. But does this really work? Mr. Tony was originally a rich man. Sonia said with a smile upon hearing this. Mr. Cassidyne also told her some information about Mr. Tony. I learned that Mr. Tony was a world-famous rich man on his original planet. Just take care of him if you can now, and wait until he invents it and starts making money. If he still has that idea, no one can stop him. 
Harvey understands Tony's nature. In Blue Star, Tony is afraid of revealing his identity and being regarded as an alien. Plus, with Pepper around, it's normal that Tony doesn't dare to have fun. But now, although Tony and Pepper can communicate, they are tens of thousands of light years apart. As long as Tony develops technology, starts to have money and has some free time, Tony will definitely steal. But he had already done what he needed to do. If Tony really got into trouble with Pepper, it would not be his responsibility. You're free to do what you want. Immediately, Harvey looked at Sonia and said. Yes, Sonia nodded when she heard this, and left to find food. She still had to exercise after eating. On Harvey's side, he was overlooking Xandar and considering the future situation. In Blue Star, he has completely achieved economic freedom. Every day he does not have to do anything, he is making money every day. In the natural universe, he must at least achieve that point. As the saying goes, good money will be lost when it is used, so he found Tony. Now just wait for Tony to start researching and inventing to make money. As his strength grows stronger, Harvey is now looking forward to meeting Thanos. Half a month passed in a blink of an eye. Tony's laboratory was also completely built and research began. Harvey, on the other hand, enjoys Sonia's meticulous care and patiently examines those who come to the Void Cult to seek strength. After Renly, Kyle, and the Predictor stayed for a month, they walked out of the island and returned to their own lives. Regarding the fact that the Void Divine Religion can receive blessings, it spreads across the world, so more and more people come to visit. So Harvey relaxed the waiting time to 10 days, and then the test time will become longer. Time passed little by little, only five months passed. With the help of Harvey's endless resources and Tony's day and night research, he finally developed a gravity device he made. Compared with the gravity devices sold on the market on Xandar Star, they are more sophisticated, and their main focus is on space fighters and space battleships, and the price is even lower. And it's not just a breakthrough in the gravity device, because arriving in the universe has a lot of knowledge that Tony has never known. So after studying, Tony's inspiration burst out like a spring, and he improved the propeller of his steel armor, which greatly improved the speed and performance of the steel armor. Now Tony is also researching nanotechnology and wants to make nano armor. However, nanotechnology is more difficult, so it has not been developed for a while. But Tony is not discouraged, at this rate before 2017 arrives. He will definitely be able to reach the peak of his strength, and then he will want to see how strong that unknown enemy is. Mr. Tony, a total of 865.34 million research funds were used in these five months. But Mr. Tony has overcome the difficulties of gravity technology. If Mr. Tony can develop more advanced thrusters and cosmic wormhole jumping technology, he will have three main systems for making space battleships. When Sonia reported the news to Mr. Cassidyne, her words were full of surprise. Mr. Cassidyne, have you expected this? Sonia asked with some confusion when she saw that Mr. Cassidyne was not surprised after seeing the results of Mr. Tony's research. In the past five months, Sonia has been learning about the progress of the research from Mr. Tony's secretary. She also knew that Mr. Tony's previous experience with gravity devices could only be described as a basic introduction. Unexpectedly, in just a few months, Mr. Tony overcame the difficulties of gravity technology and improved it. Producing a gravity device with better performance and more exquisiteness at a lower cost can directly bring immeasurable wealth. Although Mr. Tony currently only produces a few models, they are not suitable for large space battleships with higher production costs. But it can be widely used on small space battleships and space fighter planes, which is enough to earn a lot of money. To recover more than 800 million in development funds, it is just a matter of negotiating a few large orders with some large companies and the military. As I said, Tony's talent in science and technology is something that few can compare to. Harvey was naturally not surprised when he heard this result and said with a smile. Okay, I'm going to prepare to talk to the people at the tax bureau. And contact the Nova Corps to see if they are willing to place an order. Sonia could really see this talent, but she also knew that she had to go out for a walk. Because research and invention are Mr. Tony's job, and negotiating with others is her job. Only after negotiating some big orders can she start building factories and purchasing large quantities of equipment. You don't need to be afraid then. 
If the other party is unwilling, you ask them to talk to me. Harvey nodded when he heard this and said, Although Sonia joined the Void Cult, she has been staying on the island for the past six months. He doesn't have a very prominent reputation, so when talking to those people, he may attract some contempt. I'll go look for it first and see if they want to see samples. If it doesn't work, I will tell you your name, Mr. Cassidan. Sonia smiled and nodded after hearing this. She is still very confident in the new gravity device made by Mr. Tony. Even if the wealthy Nova Corps doesn't want it, companies or diplomatic departments established by other planets on Xandar will definitely be interested, so Sonia doesn't have much pressure. Well, as long as you are sensible, you can make arrangements. Harvey didn't say much when he heard these words. Um, Sonia nodded after hearing this and went back to the room to pick up the cosmic communicator. Producing a more advanced technology does not mean that you can just sit back and collect money. There must be channels to sell it. If you set up your own company to be responsible for production and sales, production lines, operations and publicity are only minor issues, the key is channels. For some channels with small orders, you can create a product first and then spend some money to do it. But if you want to negotiate some big deals without connections, you need to settle over time until you get the approval of the big shots. Getting recognition is not enough, you also need to provide benefits to open up relationships and other issues before you can negotiate the next big deal worth hundreds of millions. Not to mention the leaders in the arms industry, even large companies in the arms industry can use their own resources and connections to cut off the channels of small companies with ease. At that time, there will be a bunch of products in hand that cannot be sold, and the other party will make acquisitions if the funds cannot be used, and the bulk of the money will be made by others. Naturally, it was impossible for Sonia to let Mr. Tony's products take so many detours. So she sent a message to some of the senior officers of the new regiment. Inform the other party that a genius inventor has invented several more sophisticated and cheaper gravity devices suitable for small and medium-sized space battleships and space fighter planes. If you are interested, you can call back and talk about it in detail. Sonia has worked in celebrity hotels for 10 years. Although not every customer's correspondence has been preserved, she still has the contact information of some big names. Immediately, Sonia contacted her colleagues with whom she had a good relationship in the celebrity hotel. Did Sonia call? It's really strange that she would call me. How come that big shot who won't take you away doesn't want you anymore? Having worked in a celebrity hotel for 10 years, don't you still know the thoughts of those big shots and throw them away when you get tired of it? But as soon as Sonia got through, she heard some weird words. Senior Sonia, you don't have to worry about them. You work for Mr. Cassidan, and the news about managing Void Island has come back. They just don't like people. Sarah, a colleague who had a relatively good relationship with Sonia, said without any politeness. After Mr. Cassidan bought the private island called Void Island, it was normal for the signature to belong to Sonia. After the news that Sonia helped people sign autographs came back, I don't know how many jokes it caused. However, it was later reported that after Mr. Cassidan bought Void Island, he had not shown much face. Sonia had been building and managing it, and I heard that it seemed to be very free. This made the person who laughed at Sonia feel like they were slapped in the face. Now Sonia took the initiative to contact her and let others see it. She was so arrogant. Thank you. Sarah, I understand. Mr. Cassidan treats me very well and is usually very free. Sonia originally didn't know where she offended these former colleagues, but after hearing Sarah's words, she immediately understood and a smile appeared on her face. It was rumored that you were getting more and more beautiful, so I knew you were doing well, but now that I see you, the rumors are true. Just tell me, Senior Sonia, what do you want from me? Sarah is a hot and beautiful woman wearing a red dress with a hot figure and red hair. Seeing Sonia's happy look, a smile appeared on her face. She knew that senior Sonia looked innocent and harmless in appearance, making it easy for people to fall in love with her at first sight. She felt that this person must be very gentle and easy to get along with. When she had just received training and had to choose a senior to teach her advanced knowledge when entering a celebrity hotel, it was because she was deceived by the appearance of senior Sonia. Later I discovered that Sonia Senpai's character is the most serious among the villa managers of celebrity hotels. Also because of her serious personality, 
Sarah knew that if nothing happened, she would definitely not be contacted. Now that she has contacted her, Sonia must have something she wants her to do. I think, Sonia and Sarah have known each other for seven years, counting the new year that just passed, so there was no nonsense and they asked for the contact information of some big shots in Xandar. Wait a minute, I'll write you a letter of introduction. But I can't guarantee that they will all agree. Sarah did not refuse after hearing the words, and directly agreed, saying as she walked to her room. Celebrity hotels can be named, so there are often some matching guests, but most of them are different. Even if their identities are different, they are all people with a net worth of over 100 million. The contact signals of these characters are relatively hidden, and have set permissions. They must be opened by the other party before they can check it. Otherwise, even if others know the signal, the number will not be found. Naturally, you need to write a letter of introduction, let the other party know, and only add it if the other party agrees. I know, thank you for your help, Sarah. Sonia nodded after hearing this and said gratefully. Since you call me senior, you can be considered my master in a certain respect. It's not a problem to help you with this little favor. Whenever you find a time, Dahima can get together with me. You also know that celebrity hotels don't have much vacation time throughout the year. Unless I retire like you, it would be unrealistic for me to take the initiative to find you. Sarah said without mind at all when she heard this. Okay, when I have time to go out for a walk, I will stop by to see you. Sonia also agreed upon hearing this. Half a year later, Harvey has evolved to 504 levels, and his hearing is astonishing. As long as you are willing to listen, no matter what happens within a 50-mile radius, you can't escape his ears. Naturally, I also heard Sonia's conversation where she was asking people to ask for the contact information of those big shots. However, Harvey acknowledges the concept that everyone has a different style and handles things differently. Although Sonia didn't receive a response immediately, it was just the beginning, so Harvey didn't care. Moreover, Sonia's work efficiency has always made him feel quite satisfied, and there should be no problems this time. Immediately, Harvey went directly to Tony's villa. Because Tony completed the research on the gravity device and knew the sales channels, he didn't have to worry about it himself, so he gave himself a few days off. It's rare, it's not me who comes to visit you, but you who come to visit me. To celebrate the success of the research, I would like to hold a celebration banquet tomorrow for the members of the Void Cult to celebrate. Want to have a drink together now? Tony was surfing while drinking, and when he felt a slight vibration in the air behind him, he knew who was coming. He looked back at Harvey and said with a smile. He now has a clear understanding of the universe and knows that following his invention will soon bring him a lot of wealth. Although this research cost Harvey more than 800 million in development funds, Tony was not panicked at all. A mere 800 million is nothing. If it were at Blue Star, he could have spent even 18 billion. Although he first entered the universe and had little money in his pocket, once his gravity device started to be sold, he would be able to pay it off in less than a year, and subsequently bring a steady stream of wealth to himself and the Void God cult. Okay, let's have a drink. Harvey saw Tony's happy look, nodded, and came to sit on the sofa next to Tony. Why do you look like you're not in a good mood? Tony said with a strange look on his face when he saw that Harvey actually came to him for a drink. Now Harvey was wearing a suit of armor and a golden mask, although he couldn't see Harvey's current face. However, the two of them have known each other for a while, and they know each other's personalities well, and can understand each other's thoughts without using many words. So even if you can't see Harvey's expression, you can still tell that Harvey's behavior is a little abnormal. He asked this because he knew that Harvey himself was not that passionate about wine. After all, the alcohol after drinking could not affect Harvey at all. Naturally Harvey is preferring a variety of delicious drinks and beverages that taste better. It's not that I'm in a bad mood. I just feel like my reputation isn't loud enough. Harvey paused after hearing this and then spoke. Please, your reputation is already famous throughout the galaxy, how much more famous do you want to be? You don't know how shocked I was when I first surfed the internet and looked up information about you. When Tony heard this, he clapped his hands and spread them out, and said loudly. There are rumors about the name Cassidy in the universe. He is the first level 3 bounty hunter in history.
some people regard Cassidin as a god, a monster or even a disaster. However, the one with the widest spread and highest recognition in the universe is Cassidin, the god of the void. It can be said that no matter what kind of rumors they are, they all describe the power of Cassidin. If one day he can achieve what Harvey is now, Tony will feel that he is strong enough. By the way, Tony also looked up news about the god King Odin and the Supreme Mage Ancient One. Harvey didn't lie to him. Those two were famous top figures even in the universe. Their reputations were so famous in the galaxy that all kinds of monsters did not dare to go to Blue Star to cause trouble. But Tony quickly realized that since Harvey suddenly felt like this, there must be a reason. What happened? So Tony stood up and poured a glass of wine for Harvey, then asked curiously. It's about sales channels. I just asked Sonia to report my name directly. She didn't tell me my name, but just communicated with people in a low voice. Harvey heard this and spoke. So that's what happened. No doubt, your reputation is already loud enough. But it's normal for everyone to think and behave differently. You should know Miss Sonia's ability to do things better than I do. Every assigned task is completed beautifully. Your reputation is great, but my reputation is not. My invention has just been invented. I have not built a production line and have not promoted it. If you want it in a short time, sign a big deal and start making money immediately. If you still think that the output of the goods will not be sold, so that the goods are hoarded and a lot of money is wasted, why don't you lower your attitude and talk to others? Only when the supply and demand sides are determined can we ensure the good operation of funds and make big money. And this is the only first time that I have to talk to someone in a low voice. After a big deal is successful, my reputation will naturally grow. Including the current gravity device, as well as the subsequent inventions I made, people will naturally take the initiative to contact me, and there is no need to talk to others in a low voice. Tony said speechlessly after hearing Harvey's words. Most of the time, he and Sonia talked directly through the cosmic communicator, and they usually only communicated without sudden contact in the middle of the night. During the day, from 6 a.m. to 12 p.m., Sonia received almost a dozen calls within seconds. Then he needs something. Sonia would get it for him as soon as possible without any complaints. It made Tony even doubt what kind of life Sonia had lived before. His ability and efficiency in doing things were even better than Pepper's, so he also knew that Harvey had indeed chosen Sonia as his housekeeper because of her ability. Right, when Harvey heard Tony's words, he was thoughtful and no longer confused. As long as you can figure it out. Miss Sonia didn't report your name now because she thinks this is just a small matter and there is a way to solve it directly without bringing up your name. Tony saw that Harvey had figured it out, picked up the wine glass, took a sip, and said. Harvey is too powerful, so the option of talking down to others may not be in the dictionary. But for most people who are looking for money, they are the one who needs the other party to buy, so they naturally have to find ways to complete various things that need to be done. When your reputation is established and others beg to buy from you, you are no longer begging for others but others are begging for yourself. After hearing Tony's consolation, Harvey stopped caring. Sonia would naturally speak up if she needed help. But since he agreed to have a drink with Tony, Harvey also chatted with Tony for a while while drinking, and then Harvey also went back. Tony saw that Harvey didn't mention coming to celebrate for him tomorrow. Tony didn't mention this. He also understood Harvey. After all, Harvey's identity in the universe was different from that of Blue Star. Especially on this void island, Harvey is not suitable to participate in many occasions. Tony planned to wait until the buyer of the gravity device was secured before sending a message to Pepper telling him the good news. He is also very clear about some of his future plans. If nothing unexpected happens in the next seven months, he will definitely have enough money to buy a space fighter. When you earn more money, you can buy a medium-sized space battleship and start moving space things to Blue Star. Now that the gravity device has been developed, he still needs to study wormhole jumping technology and more advanced thrusters. Enhance Jarvis's intelligent computing power, and his steel armor will be stronger. You can ensure that you are in Blue Star and your identity will not be exposed in a short period of time. He must learn to master the production of space fighter planes and space battleships. Only in this way can Blue Star be led into the interstellar era and connected with the universe.
As long as Blue Star is connected to the universe, the reputation of Void God Cult will definitely spread to Blue Star. At that time, even if he was exposed, it would not cause any trouble, at most it would be some jealousy and gossip. Tony also knew that with the establishment of the Void Cult, there were more and more members, and Harvey was slowly raising the threshold for selection. The first batch was him and Pepper. Harvey took the initiative to give him a chance, and there was no need for any test at all. Later, it was the batch of Renly that had to be tested for four days. Now in less than a year, the Void Cult has already reached 237 members. If Harvey hadn't set up the test so mysteriously and just let others look at the stone tablet, but relaxed the requirements and passed it unconditionally, there would be at least tens of thousands of members of the Void Cult now. But this slow increase is indeed beneficial. That is the Void Divine Cult. Although there are some rumors that are pretentious or deceptive, there are no cases of members causing destruction everywhere, and there are no cases of members violating the precepts. After he helps Blue Star overcome the crisis and leads Blue Star towards the universe. There is a high probability that he will take Pepper into the universe with him. Because within a few decades, even if the Void Cult has not fully expanded, it cannot be compared with Asgard established by God King Odin. But as long as the Void Cult has Cassidy, the God of the Void, that is, Harvey. Then those members who have joined the Void Cult will have an absolutely trustworthy and reliable backer in the universe. Immediately, Tony ordered his secretary to find more chefs. Then he took the initiative to contact the various members of Void Island and told them the good news that he was going to hold a celebration banquet and prepare to treat them to a feast. After Blue Star's status became higher and higher, many masquerade parties, charity balls, celebration banquets and other occasions were more about socializing and seeing if you could get to know other people and discuss cooperation. As for the food, most of them were don't know how to eat. But for the Void God Cult, if there is a large-scale celebration banquet, they will definitely attend. Because this means a lot of energy to accelerate one's own evolution. So almost at the same time, all members in a group community of the Void God religion received the news. Rich man, rich man. When will it be held? We are out on a mission right now. We should be back in time tomorrow afternoon. The rich man Tony Stark is treating me to a treat so I won't be able to come even if I don't come. I have to go to work tomorrow. This is a treat for a rich man. It only costs a lot for a full day's work. One meal is not worth your wages for many days. That's right, then I'll ask for leave. Plus one, plus one. The Void God cult community instantly became lively because of the news that Tony was going to hold a celebration party. Because of the rules of the Void God religion, although many people in the Void God religion resigned because they received blessings. However, there are still some people who stick to their positions and want to wait until they become stronger before considering resigning to make more money. There have long been rumors in the group that Tony Stark would treat guests once in a while, which made those who didn't participate cry. Now Tony Stark is directly hosting a banquet for everyone and will go wherever he wants. The founder of this group community is Sonia, and of course the establishment of this group was requested by Tony. Sonia was still busy making contact when she suddenly heard the ding-dong sound, so she opened the group community and took a look, and found such a lively scene, and she smiled knowingly. The arrival of Mr. Tony not only made the Void God sect no longer afraid of financial problems in the future, but also made the Void God sect more cohesive. Sonia obviously will not participate, because Mr. Cassidy cannot participate in such an occasion. There was no way she was eating and drinking there, leaving Mr. Cassidy alone at home. Just regarding the funds needed for the celebration banquet, Sonia felt it necessary to ask Mr. Cassidy for instructions. So Sonia walked out of the room and came upstairs to see Mr. Cassidy looking into the distance on the balcony. Mr. Cassidy, Mr. Tony Stark plans to hold a lively celebration party. How much money do you need to approve to Mr. Tony Stark? Sonia came five meters behind Harvey and asked softly. It's enough to reimburse him directly after he finishes the event. When Harvey heard this, he did not say the specific amount of funds, but it was all covered. Now he still has two billion on hand, so he doesn't care even if this meal costs tens of millions. Now Tony is just about to sell the gravity device. As long as he sells it, Tony's character does not require him to say anything, and Tony will take the initiative to pay back his money. 
and Tony probably hasn't held a large charity ball or celebration party for a long time. Tony can't show his true colors in Blue Star. Now that we have arrived in the universe and our research has achieved very good results, if Tony is not allowed to hold a large-scale celebration party, how can Tony, who likes to show off, endure it? Okay, there is one more thing I want to report to you, Mr. Cassidy. Someone has agreed to place a billion-dollar order directly. But the other party has another condition. After hearing this, Sonia also knew Mr. Cassidy's plan, nodded slightly, and said. What conditions? Harvey heard this and spoke. The other party said he hopes you can give him a chance to talk to you. When Sonia heard this, she also stated the conditions given by the other party. Did you mention my name? Harvey paused after hearing this and then spoke. No, but the other party knew that it was me who contacted him, so he proposed this condition to me and asked me to pass it on to you for your opinion. Sonia shook her head after hearing this and explained. What is the identity of the other party? Harvey heard that Sonia didn't take the initiative to mention it, but the other party wanted to find him. His eyes flickered and he spoke. Norman Halls, an elite officer of the Nova Corps, has great authority in the new army. Sonia also said her name after hearing this. Harvey was thoughtful when he heard this. The rank of the elite officers of the new corps is not low, it is one level lower than the most powerful commander. Rather than wanting to buy a gravity device, the other party probably wanted to test his background. You may even want to use money to get yourself through, so that people who agree to let the new type of legion join the Void God cult. Harvey himself didn't really want to deal with people from the military. Dan belongs to a lower class background, so he is relatively honest. Even if he reaches a high position, his nature has changed. Nor will they be as dark-hearted as these officers who have been in high positions for many years and have experienced countless intrigues. Is there anyone else besides him? So Harvey thought about it and asked. In addition to him, eight others expressed their willingness to learn more and will take the time to come and take a look in the next week. If possible, each company should be able to negotiate more than 100 million orders initially. After hearing what Mr. Cassidy said, Sonia pulled out a list and said, these are the big names from other planets who have established branches in Xandar. As long as the quality of their products is sufficient, they will bring more benefits in the future. Eight people so soon. You did a great job. Then you talked to those people. Harvey heard Sonia humbly and got some results so quickly, he praised her directly and then said. As for Norman Charles, he should talk to him sometime. If it's friendly, then everyone can chat. If it's unfriendly, then he won't be polite. Okay, then I'll go ahead and ask. Sonia heard that Mr. Cassidyne seemed not to agree to Norman Hall's conditions, and she didn't ask why, but just nodded and agreed. Mr. Cassidyne's name can be said to be very famous in Xandar. Although there is no news about the members within the Void cult, the power established by Mr. Cassidyne will definitely attract the attention of some big figures in the Nova Legion. She personally doesn't hope that this order will go through because it means that the other party is not sincerely buying the gravity device, but is paying a sky-high price to get a chance to talk to Mr. Cassidy. Mr. Cassidy did not want to take precedence over the ideas of those wealthy people, and Sonia knew that. But regardless of whether Sonia wanted it or not, she had to ask Mr. Cassidy for his opinion anyway on a billion-dollar order. After refusing to prevent himself from arbitrarily asserting himself, Norman Charles came to the door. Letting Mr. Cassidyne know that she knew something and failed to report it might make Mr. Cassidyne have some distrust of her. Go ahead. Harvey immediately agreed upon hearing this. After Sonia left, Harvey looked at the stars filling the night sky and drank tea thoughtfully. If possible, Harvey didn't want to meet the new Legion weapon. It is not difficult for him to eliminate the new Star Legion. What is difficult is to eliminate the new Legion and take over Xandar. There are now less than 300 members of the Void Cult. Although there are many talents, he does not have that many people who can manage Xandar well. Moreover, if the new type of Legion is eliminated, this may affect Star-Lord's future actions, and the Power Gem cannot be delivered to the door in person. So when the new army really came to attack them aggressively, he would have to consider how to scare the new Star Army without going into full-scale war. In that case, he only had to wait for the power stone to be delivered to the door, and then let Dam slowly stand up high. 
we can unite with the Void God cult and slowly affect Xandar without causing too many casualties. Demons, monsters, etc. are not as useful as the name of God. Because the former makes countless people afraid and unwilling to follow you. But God is different. The other party is not only willing to follow and believe in you, but is also willing to offer some thank you gifts and sacrifices. Harvey took a look at his void energy. With so many members joining, there were now 5.86 million. And if you want to redeem Kozak, the void predator, the hero's origin tyrant alien, you only need 100 million void energy. It is also because there are not many people and there is so much energy in the void, so Harvey has tightened some restrictions on pulling people into the void. So he plans to temporarily recruit a thousand members, and then he will be able to redeem the hero's origin in a short time. One thousand is within the controllable range for the time being. If too many blessings are given, many people who secretly violate the commandments will easily appear scattered throughout the universe. If they are not caught for trial at the first time, they will be like a virus, directly infecting other members of the Void cult. There may be factions advocating cannibalism of the same kind, and they may directly confront the God King Odin. If he were to face the God King Odin, if he hadn't beaten him and let Odin run away, Zeus would be attracted, which would be troublesome just thinking about it. The thought of having to manage so many people in the future gave Harvey a headache. I really don't know how the God King Odin manages Asgard with its large population. So Harvey decided not to think about it for the time being and went back to the lobby to play games. Anyway, there has been some progress on Sonia's side, as long as those people are willing to come and see the samples. Harvey is not worried that the more advanced gravity device made by Tony will not be able to attract them. Sonia first helped Mr. Cassidan politely reject Manda Hall's conditions. Then she started contacting other people. After a day of contact, she had contacted more than 200 people, and the response was that there were only 16 people in total. Although there are only 16, this number is already quite a lot. Without Mr. Tony's reputation being known, there was no need to rely on Mr. Cassidyne's reputation. 16 of the more than 100 people are willing to send people over to take a look at the samples and learn the details, which is already a great honor. As long as these people negotiate an order, it will basically cost hundreds of millions. After all, excluding the cost, there was at least 800 million in repayment. In the future, as long as Mr. Tony's technological products are available and more people know about them, orders will automatically come to their doorsteps. Bounty hunters make money quickly and work freely, but not everyone can become a legend like Mr. Cassidy. Most bounty hunters essentially work for wealthy people, complete tasks for them, and then take the money and leave. To make money, you have to start a business. Mr. Tony is good at arms technology. The universe is so big, there are wars everywhere, and there are also some monsters. There are still many relatively backward planets, and it can be said that there is no fear that no one will buy their weapons. Thinking that she would not be short of money in the future, Sonia had a smile on her face. Although Mr. Cassidyne would not give her all the money, Mr. Cassidyne still gave her a lot of money to spend freely. The grand celebration banquet held by Tony the next day made the entire Void Island lively. Many people also know Tony Stark. The main reason for holding this celebration party is that Tony has developed the latest gravity device. It can be said that Tony Stark will really start to make a lot of money in the future. While they were still thinking about what job to make more money to improve their lives, Tony Stark went directly to become a weapons dealer. Most of the gravity devices available on the market, even for civilian use, are used for self-defense. They can be used to lay traps and prevent some dangers from happening. Many bounty hunters can make simple gravity devices, but those who create the latest gravity devices suitable for various space fighters and battleships are definitely among the top talents on all planets in the universe. Even if some large companies spend huge sums of money to provide them with a good deal of praise, they will not let them change jobs or leave their jobs. Basically, they will work in one company for a lifetime. Fortunately, Tony Stark took a commercially available gravity device and developed it independently. This amazing talent caused many members of the Void Cult to sincerely admire Tony Stark. Of course, this kind of admiration is also the reason why Tony Stark said that he would treat them to dinner from time to time in the future. Tony was well aware of their thoughts, but he didn't mind either. 
he has lived for decades, and the only problem he has never worried about is money. For him, as long as it can be solved with money, it is not a problem. Then five days passed. At noon that day, 16 space fighter planes of different models made a handsome spiral in the sky, and then stopped steadily in an open space on the island. If they want to check the samples, they naturally have to bring the space fighter to test them. As long as the performance of the sample is really higher and the cost is cheaper, no one will mind placing an order directly. However, the arrival of so many fighter planes also attracted the attention of many members of the Void Cult on the island. They looked at the logos on these fighter planes and recognized what companies these people represented. But the strange thing is that none of them belong to the Nova Corps. Kyle, Rennelly, and Predictor just completed the bounty mission a few days ago. So the three of them are now eating and drinking in the restaurant on the island. There were two beauties with hot bodies and beautiful faces sitting on both sides of Kyle, who were feeding Kyle lovingly. The two women are also 1.7 meters tall. They are tall among women, but in front of Kyle, they look like little birds. But at this time, Kyle, Rennelly, and the predictor heard the sound of thrusters and immediately stood up. Those are probably here to see Tony's gravity device, right? Tony's reputation hasn't spread yet, so how do you find these big companies to come and see it? Tony seemed to have said before that Miss Sonia is responsible for the negotiation. Miss Sonia did it, no wonder, she does have some connections based on her background. Go over and take a look. Walk. The three of them watched the space fighter flying across the sky, and also noticed that other members of the Void Cult were also watching the excitement and running towards the direction of the space fighter. The three of them exchanged a few words, but Renault disappeared. Baby, wait for me to come back. Kyle directly grabbed the prophet and put it on his back. Before leaving, Kyle blew a kiss to the beautiful woman who was feeding him just now. Then, Kyle rushed out like a rocket with both feet. It's you, I'm on your back. If you want to do this, you should do it earlier. The prophet was almost thrown away when Kyle turned around behind him and started to curse. Ha ha ha. I almost forgot. Kyle laughed loudly at this. As for apologizing, that was out of the question. What happened? At this time, a black shadow quickly crossed the ground, followed Kyle not far behind at very fast speed, and asked. Kyle, this guy, almost threw me away just to pick up a girl. I'm scolding this guy. The prophet turned around and saw Lacey, who was wearing a black tights and showing off her impressive figure, and followed her, saying angrily. Sister Lacey, your strength is getting stronger and stronger. Kyle turned his head and looked at Lacey who quickly followed him, and said. If you were as ruthless as her, you could do it too. The prophet glanced at Lacey after hearing this, knocked Kyle on the head and said. I tried but couldn't hold on. Anyway, there is plenty of time, so just take your time. Lexi, don't push yourself too hard. Your strength is already quite high. It's time to consider slowing down. Kyle looked at Lacey and said. Lacey is definitely a ruthless person, after learning from Tony Stark that she can absorb many substances. Lacey actually boldly absorbed the ore, and even took the initiative to enter the sea to try the harsh environment. She evolved 147 times in just half a year. Although the speed of evolution is much slower now, Lacey's strength can be said to have improved by leaps and bounds. When they first heard Lacey say that she had evolved more than a dozen times in a few days, they were a little jealous and tried to absorb a lot. Although they evolved rapidly several times, they were almost driven crazy by not being able to eat any food for a week and feeling nauseated even when they drank water. Well, I know, so I was in the restaurant just now. Lacey smiled slightly when she heard this and said. Although absorbing various minerals can speed up her evolution, the process is indeed very painful. Although she is not very strong, she can also take on some secondary bounty tasks and make money easily. It can be said that she has completely gotten rid of the past situation where she could only rely on her body to make money. This can be said to be brought about by Mr. Cassidy's willingness to give her blessings. So Lacey also started to slow down, eat delicious food and live a relaxed life. And not only her, but Kyle and the others have also changed a lot. They are now much stronger than before. The three of them perform level 3 bounty tasks together very efficiently, and they are becoming more and more famous in the bounty world. It's good that you know, we still have many years to live. 
since you live a long life, you must know how to enjoy it. No matter how long your life is, it will be in vain if you don't enjoy it. The physical fitness of each member of the Void Cult is extremely high, and they look very spectacular as they move among the big trees in the forest. Hundreds of people rushed to the woods near an open area and hid to watch. They saw Miss Sonia and Tony Stark receiving these people, and they all pricked up their ears to eavesdrop. Welcome everyone, this Mr. Tony Stark is the inventor of the microgravity device. Sonia didn't pay attention to the people around her, and took the initiative to introduce them to the more than 30 people who came this time. Looks a bit young, a man with blue skin said in surprise after seeing Tony Stark's appearance. Although your words make me happy, I am already over 40. Everyone is busy with each other, so there will be no nonsense. How about I assemble my gravity device for you and test its performance directly? How about we continue talking? It doesn't take long to install. If you're not satisfied, I can dismantle it for you. Tony heard this with a smile on his face and said. If possible, it would be great. These people are mainly here on orders, so they must take a good look at the performance of the samples. Then please wait for me a moment. War armor reload. After Tony said hello, he called directly. The others looked at Tony with wide eyes. Pieces of armor parts flew in from high altitudes at high speeds, at least at Mach 2 or above, causing air explosions in the air and bursts of roaring sounds. The scene was extremely spectacular. As it approached the sky, it slowed down and quickly loaded onto Tony's body in an orderly manner. The whole process only took more than 10 seconds, and Tony's appearance changed drastically. He was wearing a gold and red mechanical armor full of technology, and he looked extremely handsome. It seems to be somewhat similar to the Nova Corps. The ones from the Nova Corps are different. The ones from the Nova Corps are battle uniforms, and this kind is considered a battle armor. This thing looks good, but I don't know how it performs. Those who came to measure the performance were all interested in Tony's mechanical armor that could be loaded automatically. The name of the Nova Legion suit is famous throughout the galaxy. The higher the star rating, the greater the increase in one's own strength. However, the assessment of the Nova Legion is very high. If other alien races want to obtain the Nova suit, the chance of mastering the power of the Nova is very slim. Now a humanoid armor has appeared. The speed just now was enough to cause an explosion, proving that the lower limit of performance is no longer low. Even if it is not suitable for fighting in the vacuum of the universe, being able to wear it and use it to fight on various planets will definitely bring great convenience to one's side. Tony was not surprised when he heard that they were interested in his steel armor, because this was the effect he wanted. He is still a nobody in the universe and wants to make others take his technology seriously. Then we must use technology that shines on people's eyes to increase others' awareness of their own technology. But Tony didn't say much, and the jet under his feet flew high into the sky. Jarvis scans the structure of these space fighters and calculates the best location to install the gravity device. Tony gave a direct order. Okay, sir. Jarvis responded to the instructions, and then the eyes of Tony's steel armor directly released a red light and began to scan. Next it's Tony's time to show off his skills. A group of people watched Tony Stark, who was wearing a steel suit, flying rapidly through the air, taking out one device after another. The authority of the space fighter was directly cracked, and the door of the space fighter was opened wide. Then the disassembly and installation began. The whole process seemed to be smooth and smooth. Being able to directly crack the permissions proves that the technology invented by Tony Stark is indeed very high. As for the speed that the humanoid mechanical armor erupts, I don't know if it is the highest speed, but it has already reached Mach 3. This made the representatives of more than 10 different companies who came to measure the gravity performance this time have some fanaticism in their eyes. If you can equip your planet's army with these steel armors, they will be the most powerful weapons. Various races in the universe are not short of high firepower and even genetic medicines. However, even if there are genetic medicines that can transform their bodies, they are only beyond ordinary people. His own physical fitness is far from reaching supersonic speed, let alone flying freely. Therefore, this humanoid mechanical armor symbolizes that people can directly ascend mechanically and reach the point of rivaling superpowers with the power of mortals. The various members of the Void Cult were also dazzled at this time. Renally, can you catch up with him quickly? 
Kyle looked a little shocked as he looked at Tony Stark who was flying around in the air and controlling the steel armor as easily as his arms. It wouldn't have worked in the past, but it can now. Renly leaned against a tree with his arms folded, and saw Tony's movement clearly, and said. Although it's not difficult to snipe this thing down with one shot. But this armor seems to have been completely developed by Tony. I have to say that this kind of talent is really terrifying. Seeing Tony fully displaying the performance of the steel armor, the prophet commented. After joining the void, his physical fitness has become extraordinary, and his ability to predict has become stronger and stronger. As long as we use high technology in the right location, it's useless even at several times the speed of sound in front of him. It's not difficult to knock Tony down directly from the air. But no one can deny that this kind of steel armor is a kind of super technology. If it is willing to sell it, it can bring countless wealth to Tony. However, it is obvious that Tony does not plan to produce steel armor on a large scale and then sell it, which is not for sale. Otherwise, Tony wouldn't be researching some gravity device and making money from it. If we could equip each member of the Void Cult with this, it would really be an army of steel armor. Kyle looked up at Tony, who was still flying at high speed, and said. As long as we continue to evolve, it is only a matter of time before we evolve the ability to fly. Tony now regards this as not for sale because this armor is an indispensable weapon for Tony. But wait until Tony Stark becomes very powerful in the future. It's possible for iron armor to make some for other people. The prophet said slowly after hearing the words. When he joined the void, he had seen the various gods in the void and how they traversed the universe, so the predictor had never worried about whether he would be able to fly in the future. It just takes more time to slowly evolve and become stronger. I think this armor will be difficult to replace. This kind of armor is usually equipped with various fire weapons. As long as Tony Stark doesn't give up and continues to research technology, the firepower will become stronger and stronger. Isn't the charm of technology lies in that when it is poor, it can be deployed through tactics, and when it is rich, it can be covered by firepower. Lacey could only see some movement tracks and said. When a high-tech civilization wants to attack a low-level and backward civilization, it directly covers it with firepower, and a low-level and backward civilization has no possibility of counterattack. When technology reaches a certain level, it is difficult to directly destroy a planet. However, it is not difficult at all to completely destroy all living creatures and bad environments on a planet. This is also the fundamental reason for the emergence of various restrictive treaties in the universe. I hope everyone will support it and subscribe more.